shut them down here. Will the crabs come off Sammy in this match? Oh uh, no, they were crabs was saying that they keep getting beaten by everyone in this community earlier in the chat, so which was clearly a, a feint because now they've beaten everyone on the on the road here. They have beaten a lot of very very good players, so we'll see. We'll see what it comes down to. Important moment here, just like breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Picking I your starting commander will set the tone for the whole match. Arakasi aerial specialist and crabs with the marksman specialist, and it's uh, arc lights and balls for Arakasi, while crabs opts for uh, marksman specialist, mustangs, and crawlers for starting units. Yeah, I think I like crabs as Stark better. The level three marksman just always feels so good. It's just so like well, like. Nice thing to round out your roster, especially when you start with like crawlers and mustangs that cover other unit rolls. Yeah, I agree. It's powerful because they still get to pick their extra units. Crabs, when you go for marksman specialist, it's like the only specialist that uh, starts you on round one of another unit type, which means you can have four different unit types covering like all your bases uh, early on, which is very powerful before you've got like a cohesive force that can meet all threats yet. Um, however, I do like Arakasi's overall unit type to steamroll through the lack of grunt for crabs, but I am not personally a fan of the corner push that Arakasi is doing here. I've been very biased against it. I don't like it. What do you think of the corner bias here from Arakasi? Um, well, in like my 14 games of my 100% win rate, one person deployed literally their entire army on the line like for like six rounds. And then I just put the the self-destruct rhinos on the front line and one in a single round. So, uh, yeah. I don't like it very much. <laughs> I don't like it either because I've seen it work. But when I see it work, I feel like I see it work against people who, like, should do something to just dumpster it. I, yeah, I feel like it works against people who aren't who don't understand how positioning works in the game because once you understand how positioning works you understand how flimsy this is because you mm. can position your front line so that they they're immediately in range and just get storm collared or you know uh sledged or like i said you put a rhino on there to just mess them up there's a bunch let's of different see. ways to counter this let's see, see now as the lines do me and at least with the surprise factor in round one i can't imagine this not working uh because that's just too many balls for one marksman uh marks her or marks they to handle in one sitting i think and that poor got on the left actually if i had armor i could really beat the mustangs uh won't be able to stop him without armor though yeah. oh my god never mind because Ooh. the balls get the tower and now the arc oh gets to move forward and kill them all which is yum yum xp level up big win for akasi yeah, so that's a really big win and i think the corner push is good as that as you know just immediately being like okay haha everything i have is on one side f you however especially if you just keep committing to it now i think it's a problem i think if our now splits and reinforces the left i like that more out of a play of this as a, as a successful like you know it's like a six pull it's like a successful like cheesy opening but yeah. if you now just keep stockpiling on this right side i feel like you're so vulnerable yeah, especially with Arakasi having the level two balls on on round two is incredible, and those like there's not the level three marksman is gonna have trouble dealing with them. Like nothing, nothing that crabs come off can put down will deal with them very effectively. So yeah, just can focus somewhere else because you're probably just gonna win that side again. Especially since you got a haste module, put that on the level two balls, and you're golden, in my opinion. Starbright says he him for both these folks, so it's a battle of the boys. And my fan actually tells us that. Arakasi did the corner strat on uh, them as well, one through really strong call and use ultimately. So it looks like this is a strat that Arakasi yeah. is pushing through the brackets and winning with. Um, now, crabs are often, we saw that really try hard play in the first round. I want to see it again. I want to see how like someone who's like a real like high combat power, experienced veteran responds to this. Um, so far we're seeing uh, a flank coming, keeping the pressure up from Arakasi on the right there. As it's warping in, it will go down, but it'll be more of a problem in the future. No armor enhancement to make that thing live any longer. Um, but like you said, oh, look at the balls for the crawlers in the, the middle. Crawlers. Yeah, look at the crawlers. The one thing that can defeat the level two balls, just don't fight them. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool, leading them away. Um, it will ensure that Arakasi... Um, defeats the mustangs but look at this already would have and now crabs gets to just walk un unstopped up to the tower pivotally stopping the balls just before they get in range of their tiny tiny little range to kill the enemy tower and the marksman has time to slaughter them all up what a cool yeah, use of oh that uh, tactic that uh, we saw in the first uh, match and now you're really seeing the value of it 
Oh, I want to interview Krabs now and see, like, is that... Like, I want to understand, like, all the intended uses of that. Because I've seen... I've seen... I've watched some high-level matches. I've seen those players do it, but I don't understand why. I, I, I can guess at why, and I've seen it used against Stormcallers, but I want to understand, like, was that intentional to counter this sort of strat, or... Oh. Interesting. It's interesting. So we're seeing um, Strike Specialist for Arakasi intending to commit to more flanks. Meanwhile, uh, Krabs brings in the... Very powerful item, the, I always call it double, but it's actually 75% increased attack and HP. Puts it on the Mustangs that he um, just bought. And those are indeed, can be very strong DPS units if you get range, otherwise they can die a bit quick. Um, yeah. oh, Rhino coming in here on the flank. What do you think of the overall deployments here, Sammy? Um, I think that Eric Hesse is... Okay, yeah, they're, 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 I, I think they're smarter that they didn't like overcommit to try to kill these crawlers because i think like a worse player would have been like oh my god these crawlers are screwing me i need to put like three units on there to kill them instantly um instead they go for a hasted rhino which actually they have two rhinos they have a rhino in the court in the flank and then they have a rhino positioned on their line i think the rhinos might be a good idea here because if they can get through to the marksman and the arc lights they can really turn this engagement i think and, and give the chaff time to fight the enemy chaff and and make it a bit more muddled but hmm I agree. I, I think that Krabs, like, won with that crawler trick, distracting the balls. But ultimately, Krabs doesn't have a lot of, like, meat on their line. Uh, they unlock fangs, hopefully, for next round some crowd meat. But especially with those crawlers going down immediately, now the balls can just rush forward. I'm not sure if the level 3 marks will have enough time to kill them all. Uh, especially with the Rhino, I feel like it's just, like, not enough now. The Arc oh, coming oh, in too. Oh, ball, hero ball getting onto the tower. Oh, and that's going to be down. it there. Yep, tower goes down. Uh, and this level 2 arc light can kill pretty much as many mustangs as they want on the side as well, especially when they're towered down. Uh, back into a win for Arakasi as we seesaw between victors here in round 3. Yeah, and I, I think I was going to mention, but I... Actually, we'll see these level 2 mustangs with haste module with 40% extra damage. Oh my god, what the hell? Oh, I they're fast and they, they get hard. I basically glazed my eyes over and started reading chat for their takes because I thought it was over, but these level 2 hasted Mustangs, actually, could they win it? I think the tower timing is going to benefit them, so they're going to kill this tower and they have haste, so they're going to be able to kill... Oh, but wait, the timing is close. Yeah, but the arc light's so slow. The arc light's so slow, it's going to get stunned. I think that, I think that, uh, Krabs has got this with the timing. I agree. Beautiful, actually. I thought this was so Arakasi's round, I called it. But I think was funny. the Mustangs can do it thanks to getting that tower so they don't die, just destroyed. And the, what I was about to say there before I, before I interrupted myself was I don't like putting these upgrades on Mustangs because I feel like they're less impactful on the Mustangs. Like, <laughs> there's 75% help, health, help on a Mustang, the 75% attack, I don't oh, think but it does. doesn't really help that much. And then I was just proven wrong instantly. And oh my god, we see the 200% damage out of the advanced fire control system picked up by crabs. See, uh, I, I really like health boosting on units that are traditionally considered squishy because you learn that with crawlers when they level up that actually they're not that squishy as they level up but now you've got a unit that has like a thousand health each on like level 5 crawlers and there's like 24 of them similar with like mustangs, wasps, fangs, anything if you do support them enough to get their health over to like a thousand and up like they can actually suddenly be way different to what people expect them to be like in how they survive yeah I'm sorry to interrupt you we have a lot of interesting developments first of all we get a hacker for crabs on the rhino flank which I think he's just trying to steal that rhino. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also see something that I think is a mistake. We see Arakasi go improve storm collars and put storm collars on the front. And I think this is a mistake because Krabs' army is, if you look at it, is actually extremely fast. It's crawlers and mustangs, and they're just going to be able to run right underneath those lower range storm collars from the improved storm collar upgrade. Um, and like, what are the storm collars really there to kill? Like the arc lights? They're going to use an entire volley. Just to kill a level one arc light, it's I, mm. I, I think that that's a mistake here. Investing so much in the storm callers to counter this combo. They are very tanky. They have six thousand health with that upgrade. That's crazy. Four hundred percent extra HP. But actually, the biggest it thing is. I'm worried about is not even the storm callers. I'm actually worried in future rounds. That formation is so like AOE missileable, as you said. Um, oh, the, the hero ball gets through again though and kills the tower again somehow. I mean, it's just going straight through the middle, straight down the pipe. That, that tower. It's that lack of frontline, I think, for crabs that I keep trying to talk about. Um, but importantly here, the hacker not only gets the rhino, starts to get the balls now. This is actually a big old deal um, to really like, look at that. That's two balls which have been crushing through now. Instead, turns things around, slows crap down so much. 
Could this cascade? Oh, come on, you can do Maybe it! Get the up! Oh. If that I'm hacker had got that other one. Yeah. Not quite. I'm eating my words here again because the storm callers. The storm callers won, won our Akasi that round after I talk so much shit about them immediately. But. Yeah, I think it's not the. Because st storms are just generally good. Like, I agree with you, like, there's places yeah. they're less effective, but storms are just generally good. Um, especially because those crawlers for crabs weren't getting through to kill everything. And you can tell that because the round was so close last time. Just four Mustangs living for, for crabs, it was pretty low. I do really think, and as crabs goes to Overlord still, that crabs really lacks on frontline just thickness. I always call it thickness, like sledges or balls. However, uh, crabs is exploiting something here, which it's high time to exploit. Completely no AA. Um, yep. Had yep. you noticed that? Because I hadn't. Completely I, I just zero AA. It, yeah, for Arakasi. A single AA unit on the field. Now, is uh, Arakasi smart enough to see that coming? I mean, I wouldn't say really, oh. just kind of getting an overlord. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think that was. I don't think they realized they had no AA, but I think they. Yeah. Think something that's gonna deal with it. But, ooh, we. Uh, I think. Oh, where's the aggro? This is all gonna depend on the unit aggro, and it looks like. It looks like Krabs' overlord is targeting the crawlers. Ugh, it's tough to call. This is gonna go. I think that Arakasi's overlord is gonna die to those mustangs, though. It's, 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 it's close. Yeah, and I want to point out one thing I said is trying to reinforce your left flank, right? One thing I will say is this arc light has been so perfect against the crawlers and stangs forever. And it's kind of been like, okay, because both players have ignored this side. Like, Krabs also hasn't just committed like a single marksman or fly unit or anything to uh, kill this arc light, which has just been allowed to be the top unit in the match if you look on damage and kills the entire time. Just a single unit, like a marksman that kills this would be yeah. so much value. Instead, everyone's just fighting like this lopsided battle over here. Um, the Overlord gets to warp in pretty quick because of Flank Specialist. Um, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, but it does go down to the very high level Mustangs with extra items. Yep. Uh, there's still no extra Grunt for um, Crabs to get uh, to, to stall them. It doesn't really matter because there's no AA left for Arakasi. So now it's just how much they lose by. Yeah, and I think Arakasi would have won with it with, with, you know, if they had been able to deal with that said any sort of AA single marksman would have done it for them here. Yeah. They kill the tower, they kill the entire front line, uh, but they just have, a, like you said, no AA at all. Yeah, not a single they even thing. Have, they do have AA arcs, but I, uh, that's not when you go here against Overlords. I, yeah, I don't, they're going to have to go into Phoenixes, I think, is what I would do, because Krabs as well has almost no AA. It only, it's only that level 3 marksman and now the new Overlord that just And the Mustangs. Don't forget the Mustangs. Mustangs. The Mustangs. I forgot about the Mustangs. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Was, yeah, but the, uh, I feel like the Mustangs are dying before they can really penetrate the front line because... No range. Arakasi has, yeah, and Arakasi has gone so far into these arc lights where now, like, level 3 with armor enhancement, you know, like, you know th that's like the hard counter to Stangs right there. Um, and I think oh, yeah. the Phoenixes with range enhancement especially would be the play here. Um, I don't know if you feel differently, but... The Phoenixes are always good for taking out Overlords. Um, and at this point in round 5, moving to round 6, it's a bit late to, like, start... Fixing up your overall force, especially because this overlord is going to level, because it's the runaway overlord, as you always. Um, it's a bit late to just get a couple units of fangs or mustangs in one round and hope that fixes your air problems. I do think phoenixes are the way to go for our Kasi. However, for crabs, I I, sh I still want to see some some grunt to their force. I just worry they're so brittle. Yeah. You, you're seeing how well that hacker is working already. That'd be a lot worse with the iron beam, um, even without much no like upgrades. grunts. Yeah, I, that. No upgrades on it either. I, I think that's honestly good. Like, this hacker is basically not being over, like, invested into. It's just a useful unit doing useful things in part of the army. Um, but I want to see some sledges. I want to see something. Uh, giants, even. We haven't seen any yeah. giants apart from Overlords. I, I don't really think of as giants in the same way, but I guess they are. Ooh, Stormcallers. And another Overlord. Uh, interesting, Arakasi skips out on the extended range arc lights, which I think would be amazing here with how much... Arkasi's inventing the arc lights, especially because they have charge shot, which increases, you know, the double, the 200% attack damage. Uh, going for that extended range, I think, is a no-brainer here, and then getting the the increased damage. Maybe maybe not on this round, because you need the Phoenixes, but Arkasi also just go into Phoenixes. They get more Stormcallers and another Overlord, which I don't think is going to solve the problem here for them, because the enemy Overlord is level 2, and those Mustangs still exist. Yeah. And, now, and now, now Krabs is going for Phoenixes. Krabs is already, you know, anticipating. But you know what I don't like is... And I really expected to see something like this come from crabs. I don't know why it isn't. There it is. Missile. That's what I want to see. The enemy is just like so clustered. Just like put like yeah. four missiles here and just win every match. You know what I mean? Just get like Vulcans yeah. and Storms. Uh, as the photon goes out there, 
uh, as the call-in chosen instead of the Iron Beam for Crabs, uh, which is actually quite helpful for allowing this Overlord to tank a lot more shots. It would be dead by now to the enemy Overlord. Unfortunately, it will finally go down in the next salvo. Has it done enough? Um, not really, because there's two Overlords still alive. Wait, what broke through the arc lights? Phoenixes. Oh, Phoenixes. Oh, yeah. Of course. This is what we were saying about Crabs, is finally add a, a unit, especially a fast one. Phoenixes are perfect here to exploit the single arc like defender, take out a tower, and turn the battle. And now it's just can these yeah. Phoenixes, take out the Overlords, and win the, win the, win the round. Arakasi was so focused on winning the big battle, they fa failed to realize they only had a single arc light defending that entire tower. And of course, one level one Phoenix just wipes the floor with it. I, I think it's a bit of react respond, you know? It's a bit of like reacting to what's in front of you rather than thinking about the future. You know, that left flank has held this entire time, so they've never added anything extra to it. Now, though, is their chance to go, okay, finally that's exploded. But yeah, a, a semi-close win for Crabs there, because if those Phoenixes went down earlier, I'd like to see range in them, because range helps against Overlords nope. so much. Question, do you think you go top supply specialist here when the, the HP bars aren't even and it's round seven? I'd usually... I... 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 I don't know, I didn't look at what else was available there. Um, so there was senior attack and there was, um, I think... I feel like in this but, um, in, in this match, I feel like this is a match that's about to break. I feel like this is a dam that's about to burst of all the giants on the field, and someone is about to take this. The, the shield item instead for crabs is nice here on a Vulcan, because it goes down, gives that Vulcan time to just... Just propane all the way through, um, like I was saying, uh, this front line. Or at the very least, even if it dies quick to the, the level storms and balls, at the very least, it'll kill the crawlers, which have been giving... You know, it gives any army some trouble. Um, yeah. And Arakasi goes for the top supply specialist, which also, I just realized Arakasi has had aerial specialist this whole time, and we only have t a couple overlords, like, where, where are the mm. phoenixes, where are the wasps, where are... Aerial like, anti-specialist. Yeah, I, I feel like Krabs is playing the better air game with, with, you know, not having that at all. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a good use of... Uh, the, the Phoenixes in general. The Overlord was a good exploitation to their lack of AA. The Phoenixes are a good destruction of their Overlords in general. Rounds go off again. Um, still no upgrade on the Hacker, but pretty good amount of hacking going on on a level 3 Rhino there. Gonna get a good bunch of value out of that Rhino. That is just... That is just a really nice conversion that's happening consistently here. And the Hacker gets to live now of the Rhino Bodyguard and keep hacking things. Um, I'm watching the other flank though. We have Mustangs brought into counter the Phoenixes, and it looks like the Mustangs will make it through the Phoenixes, level two Phoenixes. Yes, especially as the tower goes down. As once again, like every single round, Arakasi breaks through to that tower. Um, the problem here is those Mustangs fast enough to now move on and exploit the other research center, but I don't think they'll reach it in time to change what's going to happen to this Overlord. No, the Phoenix mass is building, and I, I feel like uh, Arakasi just has no answer. Yeah, Arakasi, um, a little bit lacking in some types of unit here, whereas Crabs, pretty good force overall. I want to say they lack in frontline as always, but the hacker kind of fixes that by stealing Arakasi's Rhino and Bulls. So, yeah, and, they do have, and they the do Vulcan. The, the, yeah, and they do have those Mustangs with, again, the increased health. How tanky are those Mustangs now? I'm curious. They're only level two. They have thirteen hundred health each, which is actually not. It's a lot. Like actually, pretty considerable. Yeah. That's a Especially lot. Especially when you're dealing with like storm callers, and well, storm callers will still one shot them, but they're close to reaching that threshold. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a pretty good number. Uh, when you have twelve of them like that. A lot of like crawlers. That. A lot of crawlers on the field actually for crabs. Yeah, and I actually quite like the next unit that's coming in for crabs here. By the look of it, they unlocked wasps, whether or not they buy them, uh, use them here. Um, shield airdrops going down on the right for Arakasi, trying to make this flank stop losing so hard. I mean, you gotta do something because you're just giving that Rhino to the enemy every time, and that's adding up both on the battlefield and on the health damage you take at the end. Um, yeah. the, the fact that Arakasi keeps breaking through the tower is good, but the fact that they break through the tower first and then still lose is a damning indictment of how much stronger a Krabs' army is fighting. Able to withstand that and still win afterwards is a pretty big deal. Yeah, I'm trying to think what Arakasi needs here. Maybe like a rank of crawlers that comes in late. I mean, no, because there's there's so much AOE on the field. There's there's arc lights everywhere. There's mustangs which will shred them. Mm, we got some chaff wasps here of energy shield. Not the way I prefer to use wasps, but you can see the intent here. As Arakasi instead goes for AA mustangs to try and get that damn overlord, which has also been given a personal shield and wasp mothership, trying to keep that overlord alive for a long time. 
Alright, Photon for Arakati's Overlords is good there, allowing the whole force to be Golden Gods. Yep. Yeah, but it is good overall, I do like it. Um, the Mustangs do manage to take on the Overlord eventually, and that is impactful, because that's three Overlords left for Arakasi now, none uh, for Crabs. And suddenly it's not looking so good for Crabs, as once again the tower goes down like always, something Crabs doesn't stop this entire match. But now it hurts a hell of a oh lot God. more. There, the, the crab put the 200% damage increase on the flank, uh, not the flank, but the, the Mustangs on the opposite side, on, on Mustangs that are kind of on their own. And I, I watched there, I was wondering why those Mustangs were doing so much damage, and they just died of Stormcallers. I feel like that item, that super expensive item that could be so impactful is just not doing a lot up there on the, out on the, out in the boonies, basically, on a Mustang unit. A unit that's basically winning or losing over here already, um... Yeah, I, I would kind of agree with you, and I think, I think there might be some level of emotion of recognizing how much the upgraded Mustangs on the left side for Crabs have done for him in this round. Maybe going like, oh, let's do it again on the other side. It's not working out in the same kind of battlefield context. That was a massive swing, uh, as all those overlords chunked huge amounts of help off of Crabs. And you, you notice that Crabs actually went for the barrier on the hacker, not enhanced control or multi-control. I, I saw that, which I thought was strange. I mean, I... I, I feel like you need to make this hacker more effective at doing its hacking job. I don't feel like you need to really tank up that flank. You're already winning it, but it's... Can you imagine if that hacker even just had, like, multi-control or something against enemy balls? I don't know. Or the thing that makes them full health for the Rhino. That's a level 3 Rhino. If you get that thing back to full health, that's, yeah. that's incredible. It's got 66 KHP. And I love what Arakasi is doing here with the fortress, with the, the shield fortresses to, to bolster up his front line. We were talking about the front line is kind of weak mm -hmm. for him. Well, this is a good way to bolster it up with photon coating as well. Those th uh, actually, does Photon apply to the shield? Uh, it's less damage. I don't know, though, if it applies to the shield. Maybe not. I don't know, but but it's still, it's just, uh, this army is going to be so tanky now. It's going to be so hard to break through, and imagine if that 200% damage was on the was on the Vulcan, right? Well, they have the barrier instead, but yeah, imagine if... The barrier, but... Maybe the 200% damage could have been put on the hacker instead, you know? Like, it has been pivotal hacker, in the background. Overlord... I also don't feel like there's like direct answers to these like this flanking overlord of Arakasi's the entire match. Like it's just kind of been allowed to be there. Yeah. Like where's the phoenixes to kill that thing fast? But it's too late. It's been leveled now, and it continues to ride foot onto the flank. Let's see if what Krabs has got here can save the day because this is it. This is the end of the road if Krabs loses this round. A powerful photon force of golden gods and goddesses pushing their way through the towers and again to oh storm callers. I think there because. Brute forced it. Yeah, because Krabs' force is all deployed on, on top of the tower, and that's a danger when you deploy like that, because then the storms, if they aggro on those units, kill the tower. Might be what, what's been happening this entire time. But the tower down so quick, there's really nothing left for Krabs, and I think this is it. Yeah, those 200 damage Mustangs, again, they just die, not really accomplishing much. Just killing units they would have already killed, and... That's it. GG, yep. Arakasi, the underdog, the low combat power. Throw it back I mean, there. Krabs did warn us it might happen, so... Ah, oh, that, that, that doesn't count as a cop-out. You can't go in and say, like, oh, I'm probably going to lose, because everyone says that, so they don't feel bad when they lose. But yeah. I do really feel like you just saw... Th there was there was two things that bothered me about this match, as, as fun as it was to watch. One of them was I feel like there was never an express exploitation of the biggest weakness of what Arakasi is doing, is that there's just this entire clump of units all killable in, like, one Sui Rhino clump, or Stormcallers, or any kind of AoE, Napalm storm callers, and he was just never exploded. Not even just like placing like four missiles or something. Just like kill your opponent's units. They're clumped as shit. It was never done. Yeah. And the only thing that ever did that was the Vulcan, uh, which just wasn't enough at that point, I guess, because shields because come up too. Photon and shields come in, and then you know, it's it, the Vulcan's not a very. It's good against chaff, but when they have when they have photon, it's not doing the best. It's such low damage, but yeah. Yeah, and I, and I really just feel like when your opponent does this, okay, there's two things you can do. One is really exploit how closely packed they are like this. Like, absolutely, just smash them with AoE. Stormcallers are already yep. good. Get get them. But the other thing that could have been done here is going harder on the flank. And what I think I would have liked to have seen is our, uh, Crabs just picking up um, Brown and just being like, you know what, even though I'm like not doing great on the front line, I'm just going to place a strong flanking contingent and start owning Arakasi's left flank because that gets you onto their tower quicker. Killing that tower quicker means like that 10 seconds earlier or 20 seconds earlier of destroying and getting that tower, means it impacts the main battle. And then you're requiring Arakasi to divert their attention over to that flank as well. Um, yeah. 
you know what I would actually like to see? What, what is a flanking force on the other side, on the side with the forward deployed force? Mm. Because look, look what's on their back line. It's, I mean, they've got those, those got those Mustangs, which had leveled up by the end. But imagine if like three, four rounds ago, if, if Krabs just committed like maybe two units, like a, I don't know, sledge and crawler to that flank and then forced, forced Eric to have to turn around and deal with them or else have enemies on his back who are killing his tower right behind his main force. Yeah. Like, I feel like that could have been effective. Oh, of course, there's a missile there, so it's not so easy to just set up a flank, but... I, I think it's that kind like, of thing. Like... It's that kind of thing where you can't be intimidated by the missile. Just place two crawlers, you know, or just yeah. place one crawler. Um, but whatever you do, just, like, brute force your way through that, because they ca call the bluff. They can't place missiles there forever. Uh, and, and that missile, then, is just, like, this incredibly good early option that just mentally defeats the enemy, convinces them to never try and flank there, when you should really just yeah. push through and do it. Um, yeah, one of the big exploits to this, to this like formation is just flank it because if they're so forward deployed, how can they defend their tower? They can't. They're they're, they're going to rush forward and their their towers going to be left e hanging in the wind behind them. Even just like even just splitting up their formation, like if you're not going to AOE exploit it, imagine just some cheap crawlers on the side distracting like the mustangs, the the bulls, just for a little bit or something. Um, and and then the other thing is that that like this this flank over here was never properly dealt with. Like I don't understand this. I don't understand. Okay, the, the hacker for the Rhino, I get that. But why was this Overlord allowed to exist for so long with no unit, no unit at all being brought in to deal with it? This Overlord that Krabs placed is obviously aggro on the front line, but yep. never. Like, but it's level three now. You, Phoenix, you, you bought Phoenixes. You bought four Phoenixes. Yeah. One unit of Phoenixes over there. It, it's level three now, but like it wasn't when it started. And just one unit of Phoenixes just kills this. And I, I just don't get it. Yeah. Why? It's, it's easy in this game to get distracted. And, you know, there's a lot to, and pro, you know, there's a lot to focus on. You got to decide where you're going to prioritize your focus. But why round after round did we not just place like one Phoenix? Just anything to kill this overlord which was surviving until the end of like so many of these rounds and it was such an impact yep because also because that overlord lives it means these mustangs that were um crabs as early hitters don't do anything anymore because they just die to the overlord eventually yeah look at look at the items in all the mustangs they all have items on them they have the haste module the amplification core and then yeah. that 200 percent damage which i just felt went completely underutilized because it's on this it's on this mustang all the way in the corner that's just dying to storm calls before it even shoots anything and that's what i feel like i feel like if you look at those you do you remember that one round i think it's the emotional power the human spirit here of that one round with the mustangs with the upgrade that were properly given support four of them won clutch the match the round sorry and I think it's that human element, if I had to guess, of like, you remember the time you supported this unit and it did well for you. So now subconsciously, you're thinking, or consciously, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna do that for the rest of the match. So, and then, but you look on the other Mustangs and they do not have anywhere near as much damage as these ones. They just never did as well. Uh, these items yeah. could have been pivotal on different types of units. And I just think overall, the thing I kept trying to say throughout the match, apart from that Vulcan, there was never a lot of brunt added. I see these balls come in, but it looks like from their damage, they came in like right at the end. Um, and I think that was needed earlier. Just there was, I, there's many ways to play Mechabellum. I am very biased against armies that are squishy. I think you need to have an army that isn't just squishy damage dealers. And I think that was painful for Krabs here. Yeah. I think we should get into another yeah, match. Any other thoughts? I think we should. No, I think okay. it was, I think Arakasi played it really well. I think, I think he went for a strategy that was exploitable. But like I said, if you don't get exploited, then, then it works. Yeah. And so. th this is what I mean about the strat, is it, like, I, I watch it and I'm like, hey, it, it must be. It must be harder to deal with in person than it is to watch the armchair, because yeah. it looks like such a clump. Um, but clearly, I mean, people do it, so it must work. Yep. All right, uh, Starbright's got me the new line. I'm going to take a look now. As we have a look at the winners and losers bracket. So let's have a check here. So as we just saw there, Arakasi advances past Krabs. Krabs, the player who showed us Mechabellum, your path ends here. Wait a minute. Does, losers bracket isn't in effect anymore, right? It's just for the first bit. Yeah, it's just for the first losses. So yeah, you're, you, you must give back the rose. You are not the bachelor. Um, the Fantastic Miss Fox continues on. My biased player continuing. Uh, past two by two arc. And now it'll be Arakasi, who we just saw, versus Fantastic Ms. Fox in the winner's bracket. Meanwhile, 
uh, we have round five losers. And I think we have two sets of round five losers to watch now while the winner's bracket is paused on the catch up. Sloth Boy Lives continues past Noctilla, who unfortunately redeems himself with that win against Maxigirl, but doesn't continue past Sloth Boy, um, who now takes on Nero Barbecue. Um, Fabricio V. Looks like Incredon is going to get a second chance, actually. S what? Yeah, okay, so I don't understand how tournaments work, but it's fine. I see the, the later losers are coming in and later in the loser's bracket or something. So now Fabricio goes against Incredon, who does get another chance. Um, and then the winners will fight. And then we have the Bieg uh, advancing past Cornite. Uh, I wanted to see the grudge match. Uh, but actually, both of oh, them no. both of them grudge out to each other because Anarian gets beaten to by Ricochet. Uh, and now it is Bieg v... gone. Bieg v Paladin of Arlisle and Ricochet versus Halt the Sky, your last kiss once again. Is everyone getting their second chance? Like, everyone gets, like, a second elimination, I guess? No matter how I late? Assume, that's usually how most upper brackets work, is that no matter what you always go down to the lower bracket. Okay, so we have quite a bit of matching to watch here, because now we need to watch this round, and I think then oh, and this another, is another round. round. So now it's all okay, about so the yeah, losers bracket. So I'm down, I'm down to watch more matches, it's fun. Who do we want to watch next? Do we want to see... Let's Someone watch new? We haven't watched yet. Yeah. yeah. Is there a duel we haven't watched either? Paladin of yet? Paladin of Arlisle and the Bieg. We have not watched yet. Chill. Let's see who defeated Cornite. Yes. Um. I'm just looking around. Other than that, looking for matches we haven't seen anyone fight yet. The only other one would be um, Nero and Sloth Boy. But let's check out Paladin of Arlisle and Bean. All right. Let's I'll let uh, I'll let her know. I enjoy my uh, my position of being here in the caster's chair, not having been involved at all in any of the effort of organizing how this is going to play out, and just kind of like, uh, like with that dis disinterested kind of disdain of like a noble on a horse be like, oh, what? Like, is this how it works? I don't understand it. This is confusing. Uh, as meanwhile, like Starbright is behind the scenes, just like screaming, I imagine. I'm trying to like put together like everything as sweat drips off of her, her brow. Uh, trying to pull all the levers at once to keep this thing running. I love it. That's how it felt doing the one ride through them all. So I, I was telling Star, I was like, I've, I've been there. <laughs> That was a much easier tournament to run than this, because you, we, like I said, we didn't have 20 people playing at the same time. Starbury says people were asking me if I was going to be playing in the tourney, and I'm like, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know when you're ready? I'll try, yeah. Uh, I don't think you accepted the friend request of me or something, Starbury, because I don't see you actually on my friends list. So you might have to invite me. If I am star added. Star, you can invite me too. Hang on, let me try joining off star. Yeah, there we go. I'll invite you, Beagle. Too oh, late, I'm in. Oh, okay. What the fuck, Beans pick? You cannot cut back on combat power, you will regret this! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Paladin of Arlisle with the powerful 108 combat power. Arlisle been creaming their way through the loser's bracket, apparently, of that 108 combat power. I love to see someone yeah. with so little combat power of an account so fresh that they are literally, like, farming huge amounts of combat power off the opponents in a tournament. Like, that's great. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, do you go up, like, a thousand combat power if you beat somebody way higher than you? Well, I can check. I beat Incredon, and I think I only got, like, 100. You, you did in the beta, where people had built up, like, 200,000 combat power dragon whores, and I had, like, 10. Yeah, but, um... Apart from that. Alright, so these are brand new players we haven't got to see it all so far, and I'm curious to see who who does it. So obviously here we are in the losers bracket. I think this might be our first losers bracket match we're watching. So both of these players did take a down uh, in the winners bracket, of course. But both of them now have fought through quite a number of rounds to get to here, right? Like this is either their third or fourth. Um I think so. so. Showing that you're not out till you're out in the Star Bun Invitational here. It's an Invitational, right? No, it's not. It's a, uh, people just sign up for this. So what do we call it? A tournament? I don't know. 
No, you can't just call things tournament because that's cringe. Like, it has to have, like, a special name. Challengers. Name. Challengers. <laughs> God, no, that's more cringe. This, what, that was the tournament I just cast out of Kanor, you little bitch! Exactly. Are you kidding me? The open? Yeah, yeah, the Starbun open. There you go, thank you. People know what I'm talking like about. Golf. Yeah, and... Well, golf is kind of cringe, but... Tennis, think of it like tennis. Tennis is... Uh... Come on, it's not that bad. Tennis is still a bougie, like sport. a bougie sport. You know, it's a bougie <laughs> sport. No, we agree completely, but it's not like as bougie as golf. That is true. It's golf is completely sport. bougie. Okay, what is, let's see what they picked. Yeah. For Bean, we have Heavy Armor Specialist, which I know you love. Heavy Armor Specialist with balls seems super good, because they have so much health. They're so, so chonky. With a lot of units in this game, it does come down to break points, and I think that's what you mean by, like, a lot of the time you don't notice the difference. But if you have a good commanding, uh, command and understanding of those break points, um, you can do some pretty cool things with Heavy Armor and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it's okay. Marksman Specialist or Paladin Arlyle. Uh, marksman, level, having a level 3 Marksman is pretty pivotal here to get through those balls fast. Uh, so that is yeah. good. I'm trying to do some math right here, hang on. While you do your math, I'll keep talking then. Um, aggressive from Bean here. Aggressive. No, not Bean. That's aggressive from Arlyle, who puts down two missiles from the start. Uh, just going like, you know what, screw you, I uh, have money. Oh dear, that's going to be very, very good missiles. The oh, balls... but the defense specialists, they live! They barely live, but the arc light is going to eat them like a bowl of cereal right there. They're going to slop them up, yum yum. Oh, yeah. Just like their fangs. Uh, and those missiles are a... I mean, the GOHF was posted in chat, but can it really be a good-mannered game if you begin it like that, Sammy? Uh, missiles on round one is BM. Especially two missiles, that's, 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 you know. Buddy, yeah, that's, it's, it's like you show up to a fencing match and you just pull out your Glock. Like, that is, you're wiping yourself off, you're like, okay, I see how this, this match is gonna go, okay. Shield oh, yeah, specialist definitely. for being here, um, good choice extended in general. Range sledges. I've really fallen into extended range sledges recently. Um, and the reason why is it lets them rack up a ton of damage, which means a ton of XP, which means a ton of levels. And leveled up sludges with the right upgrades and extended range are kind of terrifying. Range does win battles. And though the, yeah. the loss of health is scary, um, with some units, against some units you can get away with it because, again, it's all about breakpoints. I don't think anyone opted for it here. Instead, what you see Paladin go for is Assault Fang. Now, Assault Fang is actually quite interesting because it may not come into play with a lot of the stuff that they get killed by in one shot still already, but you'll actually notice that there is a mistake with the tooltip. Assault Fang... Yeah, it's still broken, I noticed. ...gives, yeah, Assault Fang gives Fangs, like, 40% extra health as well, which doesn't say it does. So it's quite powerful. Yeah. I don't think it's that good on its own, but if you were the Heavy Armor person especially, if you then level the fangs up, like babysit them, and then you give them all like senior defense specialist and the tower defense specialist, you can get them to be really strong. And like I said, when you get a crowd unit that healthy, it can be a big deal. Here we go again with three, three more missiles. You know, it, 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 I, 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 I joked that it's BM, but it's really economical Wait. here because of the positioning. Because these missiles. Wait, we did it. Oh dear, that's we did not good. Round two dead, and they're getting missiles. Ooh, what did they go for? Double Phoenixes? Did they have the depth for that? I'm trying to figure it out now. I just noticed. Yeah, that. because they're heavy armor, so 400 isn't enough to unlock 5th or 50 and buy two of them. Um, yeah. It's doing better for them here, but I don't think it's going to be enough because with the level 3 marksman and marksman, yeah, slammed. That is really bad. Going yeah, that early and missiles, losing. But... Yeah. Ooh, yeah. So, Paladin. Well, like, you're not going to have enough to get shields and units. Yeah, like. Like, crippling your economy that early of round 2 debt, and then losing still is super bad. Paladin is still getting XP. Um, Paladin going for the missile strike. <laughs> they keep skipping strike. because they're so broke. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not good. And yeah, like, the missiles, beyond the jokes of it being BM, um, whether or not it frustrates, is actually really economical here because of the positioning. But as I was trying to say, because the balls cluster of the arc lights, the missiles are getting two for one every time. Bean buys defense enhancement on the tower instead of shielding. Well, I mean, they sold 200. They could still shield, and I hope they do. D because, oh my god, that's not going to help you against missiles. Yeah, you need to get, like, some... It won't help. Do you know what would be so fucking funny to me? If, like... Okay, there are the shields. Thank god. 
You know how, like, they say, like, you know, a newbie will come into a poker tournament and just clean through people they shouldn't because they just, like, have no concept of the way the veteran players think the game should be played? Yeah. Can you imagine if Paladin of Arlisle, that imposing profile picture with 108 combat power, just got the game and just has spam missiles against everyone they fought in this tournament and it keeps working? <laughs> like, all they, all they do is just keep buying missiles. They're like, this game is easy. Just keep buying free missiles. Yeah. <laughs> the only one missile lands here, including the the call and missiles used. So let's see if let's see if um Yeah. Eagle help me with the names, please. God. Um it's Bean the Paladin Bean. of Missiles the here. Force can do it here, everybody. Oh the backup missiles saving the marksman oh, for a second. <laughs> <laughs> There's a backup missile on the flank! Uh but unfortunately That's no. Bigger. Not no, quite not enough. BM. That's actually a legit missile, but I feel like it's BM here. It felt like BM. Everything feels like right. BM, but um. The Bean's force kind of proves itself after getting a little support of the form of the shields. Um, yeah, definitely. And now that, that that combo actually of the the heavy armor specialist plus the fifteen percent armor is actually pretty. Um, that's pretty big and. Wait, no, that's not... That's what I'm saying, Sammy, because now that Bean has also bought Defense Enhancement, these balls that would normally be like 4,400 HP now have 6,000. These level 2 crawlers yeah. have 700. Arc Light's on 5,000. Even Phoenixes go from like 1,600 up to 2,100. Oh, Battlefield yeah. 2,142 HP. That's a big deal, you know? Yeah, that's actually huge. I, I You know, I, I, I always like underestimate that increased attack and increased and especially the increased hp because i always i always forget they're permanent when you buy them i think they're temporary mm. for some reason yeah it's like a starcraft it's one good. one and they're really yeah. cheap it's really good and now upgrading the balls and the phoenixes and getting more balls which i, I wait no what i mean by you know wise I'm all i need paladin to do is just place their missiles where the shields won't be but oh they double don't do that elite, elite recruitment crawlers for bean i think this is actually uh, uh, I, Paladin kind of fucked up one of the missiles, I think. No, that that's not Paladin's missile. Oh. That's Bean's. No, it is a bit fucked up. Really? Yeah, but but, but oh, they're placed to not go into the shield. Though one on the side is misplaced and does still go into the shield. Vulcans descend in the rear. Gonna get mauled by the balls. Not do a ton there. Uh, but with flank sickness, the Mustangs and the Arclight do kill some crawlers. Might defeat them all. But they're not on the front line now. And overall, as much as I love our missile spamming Dark Horse, it is really looking like the army is not there. I think once those shields come out, you have to, you have to stop. I mean, did they even kill the shields last round? No, no, those shields are such value because they're not going down. Because the battle has been entirely fought um, on Paladin's turf here. Just, just give up on the missiles at this point. Go into, go into beefing up your army because they're... Yeah. You're losing that frontline fight for the art. And, and here's the thing, because when you're a new player, you might... Oh, yes, please get Senior Defense oh, Bean. Oh, my God. Get ah! Senior Defense Bean. Passed it up? Passed it up for Strike Specialist? No! And a skip from Paladin with 1,100 funds? Okay. I'm, I I don't want Bean to win anymore, because I can't believe they didn't double down on HP right I, now. I'm I so know, mad. I know. I just wanted to see the HP values get so high. I mean, the Steel Balls level 2 ones have 12,000 HP right now. Like I wanted to see it. at level 1 have 3,000. Oh, I wanted to see it so bad. Double Fortress for Paladin. Interesting. Uh, you're, um, like your, favorite in, <laughs> your favorite in chat writes, This is the loser's oh. bracket, people. Wow! Oh, wow. Oh, my God. We're dying. <laughs> <laughs> a BM match from all sides. Players, from <laughs> chat. Oh my god, wall angles. When you come <laughs> down to the loser's bracket, you're gonna get dirt on you, apparently. And we have flanking elite recruitment level 2 balls from, from Bean against fortresses. So I think, I mean, I don't fortresses into this heavy ball comp is, is interesting. Um, yeah. These fortresses are just gonna get, they're gonna get balled down. I think this is the end, my dear friend Sammy. Because I, I, think so too. I'm, I don't really see a way for how to get out of this. How do you get out of this hole? Like, it's this thing where, like, because uh, I was trying to say this last time before this crazy shit started happening in the deployment of, like, new players in this game might ask something like, oh, if you just buy missiles, <laughs> fix missile specialist. If you just take the super heavy armor, no! If, if, you, if you just buy missiles, you know, isn't oh. this game OP? You just buy the consumables. But here you're seeing the thing is that. That heavy investment in the missiles early for Paladin means that they're investing less into their army, significantly less later on. And now, it's just like Bean's army is just crushing through what's there for Paladin. Now, the choices of unit could be better for Paladin too, to be fair. But, yeah, like, it's... You're really seeing the six pool fail now, the early aggro fail, and fall in the face of a just overall better army. Um, 
Fang production on the fortresses isn't bad, but now that Bean got Stormcallers, triple Stormcaller, it's it's uh, that's not going to save you against that. And, and a Bean, very good, very good diversification from Bean. And Bean has the luxury to do this because Bean is so comfortably ahead for the last few rounds that there's no need to like bring in anything specific because they're already Bean everything that Paladin puts out. All Bean needs to do is go, you want know to make this army look prettier? Storms. And there you go, you can just yeah. add them in. The force is already good and diverse. Um, yeah, it's scary. And it's going to do a great job at killing forts. Interesting that, that Paladin gets the increased damage arcs. Do they have an arc upgrade? Oh, I can't tell. I don't think so, though. So, don't count out Paladin yet because they just use the 200% extra damage missiles with their reinforcement to just destroy the flank. Um, none oh. on, some on the front line there also taking out some of uh, Bean's army. I honestly think this is all that Paladin can do at this point. Just keep spamming missiles. Just double down. <laughs> and just play some... Arts are doing a lot of damage, but they're dying now. Yeah, the shield actually conceivable is nice there on the side and letting that force do some work. Oh? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah! Wait a second. Hang on, let him cook. I think he's up to something here with these 200% damage arcs and the, the, the missile upgrade, like you said. Oh, he's got charge shot on the arc, so they they have charge yeah, shot on the arcs? Yeah, on the arc. They were, they're actually, like, killing the balls. The 30% the, the extra ADP balls pretty well. Yeah, and the shields go down. The fort taking damage, but these are only level 1 storms. They're not going to be able to kill the fort on its own. And, and by the way, the fang summoning on the fortresses are ac actually distracting a lot of the balls as well. I forgot to mention that too, but they're about to spawn more. And Woo! Oh, oh my god, the comeback? And Paladin the, didn't the even debt. Paladin was so confident there, didn't even debt. Didn't even debt. And we were just talking about, like, how does Paladin get out of this? And it seems like Easily. a few crucial unit upgrades. It, and it, missiles. It earned the tide of the missile. The missile pick was, was actually clutch there. Improved Overlord, is that for Bean? No, that's for Paladin. Up oh, and Paladin, there we go. Yeah, they are. And how is the AA for Bean? Oh, where is it, Sammy? There's two oh, units of Phoenixes. Are Phoenixes. I didn't see the Phoenixes. I thought they were just none, and I'm there, about there, to say that. There is two units of Phoenixes, but note that Paladin's army won the last round. If they do uh, consistently well again, the Phoenixes will probably die before they can kill the Overlords if the Overlords stay behind. Though the, the Overlords' position might actually race ahead, which is a problem. Yeah, and Bean goes into a hack, but I don't think a hacker... I mean, I think I think what they're thinking is, okay, I'm going to hack the fortresses. Mm. But the fortresses are spawning fangs every 28 mm. seconds. Like, you, you, in the fort, you didn't get multi-hack, so mm -hmm. I don't think... I don't think these hackers are going to be able to really do much, especially with overlords coming out, which don't even, don't yeah, even care. Yeah, and straight into the barrier, um, which is so much money. All the money for Bean goes into this. It's like, what a sudden flip. This is the moment. You've seen me do it. We've probably done it ourselves, everyone in chat. The yeah. moment where you go into hackers and then you'll look back in three rounds and go, I should not have gone hackers. God, that, that missile upgrade is actually so clutch for Paladin. How poetic is that? That Paladin, if Paladin comes back by using missiles to defeat B. Is it, is it really poetry, Sammy? Or is it just spamming fucking missiles? No, because, because, because B used the missiles to destroy the, the BM them in the first rounds. No, it was Paladin using missiles every time. It's always been Paladin spamming wait. missiles. Wait, I thought it was... Wait. Oh no, God. Paladin's the missiler. It's not poetic okay, or ironic. It's that. just Paladin spamming that. missiles. I thought it was a lot funnier than it was. <laughs> no, it's, it's just even funnier because it's just like Unga missiles. And it is kind of working. Um, two of the Phoenixes are down, leaving only a level 3 Phoenix on the side. The Overlord actually pushes through and gets Bean's Tower, which is going to slow down effective DPS yeah. for them for a while here. Um, this overlord will go down to the F-15s very quickly, but, oh my god, these giants are leveling too. And the, the, the fangs are being spawned, and oh, this one's not clearing them out, but I think it's just too much. With the, with the fangs spawning, actually might be clutch here, because it's going to yeah. the hackers and the, uh... That, that hacker's not going to do anything. The marksman of range is pivotal here, the range upgrade, Another perfect. Fangs come out. Yo, those fangs are great. Oh, that, that, that's a clutch upgrade, I love it. I'm a believer in that now, that, that upgrade, I certainly believe in it, that was good. That was the great hacker mistake there. I believe it. Oh, the Dark Horse, Paladin of Arlisle. Can the turnaround happen here on 866 health in the loser's bracket? I feel like the next round is about to be one player wins, one player dies. Advanced fire control is... Those laser sights. Um, I think Paladin's going for the throat. He got the um, the uh, lightning storm, and Vulcan descent is up, and so is missile strike. While you, Bean has no no abilities. You think that lightning I, storm is a throw? No, not throw. I think I think they're going for the. Oh, throat. Bean yeah, picked I, laser sight instead of lightning. I see what you're saying. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, Paladin picked the like sort of. Paladin's going for the throw. Paladin just wants to to end, and they're, they're calling in all their drop-ins. I think this is the way you do it. I think you just spend. I don't even think you buy units. I think you just upgrade all that you have because you have you have so many giants that need to be upgraded, and your comp is doing so well, and you just rely on your Collins to wreck everything else. But here is the Mpreg, Sammy. The melting point with uh, sorry, range enhanced gameplay here. Range enhanced gun. Sorry, I forgot it wasn't. <laughs> I forgot that set stood for regen. The ERMP with range specialist and laser sight. Uh, which I will mean, immediately fight the overlord. Go I on. I think it's good, but I think it's I think um I think it's too late. I think the Collins might do it here for, for Paladin and then I mean I guess I just upgrade upgrade your fortress, upgrade your the shit you already have and it's oh, starting. No missiles and it's stuff. starting, it's starting. And I want to point out again, even in this round, Paladin did not go into debt, whereas Bean immediately slammed it. The mental game is on Paladin's side. Cool, calm, and committed here. Not even deading in this critical round. Uh, as we see the, mat fi the, the fights go on, the MP trying to solve everything on its own, but oh, truly can it. Hacked. We're just getting hacked on the other flank. The oh! oh my god! The hacker goes out at the last second before the fortress gets hacked. No problems. The MP. Oh! The Fang upgrade is so good there. Finally, the uh, melting point gets onto the Overlord, but it took so long. But can anyone stop it? It's level two. It is level two. There are double Overlords and a level three Marksman with extended range. Level five Marksman. Sorry. Holy shit. I. 11k damage a shot. But does it outrange the Mega Range? It doesn't even outrange the MP. The MP outranges it. If this, if this truly was Mpreg, like the MP regen, I think it could win here. But I think there's enough on the field. Oh, not if the Overlord's go down first. No, that's it. The Overlord's speed is critical here. It's it's, it's Marksman, Marksman. No, because the MP has slight AoE. Oh, my God. Oh. The slight AoE on the MP. Oh, the on. I forgot he had... I thought he was down to, like, 400. You had the 800. Oh my god, this is so close. The slight AoE on the MP was clutch there. It's cheating. The MP shouldn't have it. We all think it's cheating. You there we go. I think, go for, I think you go for wasp spawning right now. I never it's believe, like... but you are right because these matches go so long that actually uh -huh. spawnings would be good. You're right. You're so right. And you you need to upgrade your units. Pa look, every single unit in Paladin's army is ready to be upgraded, but he's buying... Missiles. I don't know what he's buying. He's buying more <laughs> balls. More level one balls. No. I don't think. I, well, maybe if you flank with these, I don't know. I, I I think you need to just upgrade your force. Your force is like. Yeah. It's falling behind on upgrades. I look, all of Bean's force is level two. All of Paladin's force is mostly just level one. I agree about the upgrades. I also agree that like, I usually don't like Wasp Moth Mother Ship upgrade. But when you have four Overlords like this, and the enemy still has like so little AA, you and the matches go so long. When a match go, the longer a match goes, the more powerful the unit factory upgrades are. I actually think you're right that Wasp Mother Ship could win this match. Yeah. There it is! There it is! There it is! Carrier has arrived! And, and chin, guns. chin Guns! I don't think Chin Guns is the right choice, but whatever. Neither I'm do I. Upgrading those guys to level 2, but... Yeah, I would rather uh, say some of the Chin Guns, just upgrade all your fuckers, but no upgrades here. It's a... I, it, it's a unit of the common. Sammy, it's an I army know. of the common. Was he not missling those back? Oh, I guess he has the chin. Look at all the missiles! Oh my god. I don't even know who, who, whose side they're for. Oh god, they're flying everywhere. Missile. Missile goes off everywhere now. Immediate barri barrier going down. Wasp Mothership does go off immediately and it'll keep on trucking throughout the match. Another melting point comes in on the yeah. other flank. Bean hoping that the savior of one flank can be the savior of both here. But I, f I, I have a hunch here that MP is the egg basket that you can invest too much into. I don't know. It's looking pretty bad though right now for Paladin. That don't have damage they're so flimsy against these level like two it's true balls and they're, they're, it's true it's true but don't cut them out yet one. don't cut them out yet sammy because the wasp mothership upgrade is going to be pivotal here in defending against the mp unfortunately a backup missile from bean blew up the wasp cloud on the left so that mp doesn't get to yeah, look, get distracted the uh, are struggling just to kill phoenixes because they're uh, so leveled in yeah i think that's, that's it. it i think the problem was that paladin just completely fell behind on levels. I agree. Their, their I, I agree. Units were not doing enough damage. Like, like, there were two over... The overlord was on that enemy MP, 
I, I agree. It, it, it was just tickling. It wasn't doing damage because of level 3 versus level 1. 10,000 percent I agree with you. It pains me to see all of these arrows because those aren't just level 2s ignored. These units could have kept on leveling and been 3 or 4 by now. Absolutely, I think the real bag drop there is not leveling. Yeah, I think I think that Paladin. This is a rare case where I think the player with the better comp lost. Yeah, because they didn't they didn't level. They fell behind and and, and levels levels are so powerful in this. It's literally double the stats for half the you price. Can't ignore them. Yeah, for half the price, you can't ignore them. And it's possible to get intimidated by a big laser unit and think even if I upgrade the four, it's going to die anyway. But I do think that's not the case here. I think upgrades would have been incredible because, as you said, it's not just that you didn't upgrade, it's that your opponent th did. And now your units just cannot keep beating the level up units that they were able to beat before. Absolutely. Seeing all these up arrows, you know, whether you're, you know, wherever you are, this is bad news. Either you're not upgrading your units enough in Megabellum or you've accidentally ended up on Reddit. In either case, you're in for a bad time. <laughs> what if you're on the Megabellum Reddit? No. Is that doubly bad time? Yeah. <laughs> You're on the Mechabellum Reddit and someone is saying they don't upgrade their units. Let me tell you what the top threat of the Mechabellum Reddit is right now. Oh god, as B. Figueroa says, you can't come back on funding, you will regret this. <laughs> that was a really good match, it was super exciting, GG to both players. That was uh, exhilarating to watch, my favorite match so far, I think that was great. Woo! Oh no, I've already found bad takes. Tell me about some bad takes while we get into the next match. Um, apparently... Oh, fantastic, there's no! Double shot and missile interception are all bad. They're, they're traps, apparently. Yeah. None of them are good. Because that person lost with them and then said they're bad, yeah. Yeah. They said, the title says, show me your bad at Mechabellum without actually showing me your bad at Mechabellum. It's those three skill icons. Oh. It's kind of ironic because I would actually say... Oh, spoilers. I would actually say that that's a good way to show me your bad at Machabellum without telling me your bad at Machabellum is to think those are bad. How to counter hacker spam. <laughs> they seem to mess up target my units so bad, it turns to extreme value. <laughs> if I go a good sweat with these five times beam, oh no. There's someone oh, in general chat that. right now writing, I hacked your girlfriends. Do you know what their name is? <laughs> what? Hacks your girlfriend. Oh no, that's, that's the person who just beat this guy with the hacker thread. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> this is like that joke. You, you know the Minecraft joke with the beds? Yes. I love that joke. The one of like advent Green Tech's adventuring with Minecraft GF. And then she dies and you're sad. And then she wakes up in like your neighbor's spawn point bed. <laughs> All right. Are there any matches still going? I tried to tried to check them out. I think Cornite's out, out, right? So Cornite must just be playing for the the fun of it right now. As makes sense for someone named Cornite. I don't think it's a tournament match. Uh, I think I think we're just getting ready for the next round. Are we? We're not semi final. Yet, are we? No, we have another round of losers to go, I think. That's bracket. Right. Losers bracket. Losers bracket. Lower bracket is the politically <laughs> correct term, Beagle. Oh, okay. We have another round of lowers to go through. <laughs> 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 Rounds completed, and Starbright is now putting the matchups up. Ricochet said, wow, Beags, wow. Oh, Ricochet, did you just lose your match? No, wait, I forgot. <laughs> it is the losers bracket anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> There's the one bracket. There, there, the ricochet was already in the losers. I mean, lower bracket. I forgot. It's not, I, 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 I was making fun of them as if there was like, like layers of hell. Like there's another like second lower bracket to go to afterwards. You just keep going downwards, never ending. <laughs> the losers of the losers bracket fighting all the way down to like nine circles. Who's at the bottom of the losers bracket? Who's who, who lords over at the end? <laughs> Down at the bottom of the pit, screaming, trying to get back out. <laughs> That's basically like all the people on Reddit who play like any game like this or like League, being like, "I'm bronze stuck." No, you're just bad. Anyway, <laughs> Nero Barbecue. Uh, Nero Barbecue gets to fight Incredon because Incredon uh, fought their way, clawing their way like Dante out of the Inferno. Uh, beat Fabricio. 
uh, as <laughs> shut up. I'm, I'm an artist in my metaphors. Michelangelo, Leonardo, Da Vinci, I remain. Incredon beats Fabricio. Nero beats Slothboy. And now Nero uh, and V Incredon is the next fight. I'm semi curious to see that one, but I want to make sure. I've seen that one. I haven't seen Incredon in a while. I want to make sure that we uh, pay fair enough to the people we've seen. We haven't seen Ricochet fight yet, but we also haven't seen Nero fight. And I want to see Incredon fight. Uh, a comeback yeah, we here. Saw, yeah, we saw Incredon in the first round. It was the first match we watched, right? Or second, I guess. One of the second, yeah. No, um, I, Rick, Rick, um, Rick beats Hold Up, by the way. Uh, hold the Sky, last kiss, knocked out again. GG to them. Uh, GG to her. Now that we know the pronoun, say it loud, say it proud. Her has the bag. <laughs> defeats Paladin, as we just saw. And we'll, we'll probably end up finding out how their match goes after this. But I think, yeah, let's watch Incredon and Nero here. Do it. Are you asking me to do it? Sure. I do have Incredon added. I can just join their game. Um, Starbright also wants. The room wants... is a private room. Starbright also demands payment. Payment. Yeah, in showing this on the screen. So there you go. <laughs> the buns. That's cute. I love a good bun. Do you love a good bun, Sammy? <laughs> really. Yeah. No? I'd say I love. You like a good bun. No? It didn't even sound like, like you like. I feel like it says you can take it or leave it. Like, I won't say no to a good bun, but, oh, okay. you know, not going to go actively seeking them out. Why? There's no favor to my conversation. I just put a weird inflection on it. Why? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I don't care for buns yeah, very much. They're, they're just little fluff creatures. You don't like that? Oh, fucking, I've just offended people. Fucking just Warhammer offended player. Them, right? Thank you, Slothboy lives with the six kids of the community, by the way. Thank you very much. A tournament player and generous. But I, yeah. I'm a lizard man, and you know that. Ah, you're a lizard man. That's right. You think skinks are cute. You probably yes. like frogs. Oh my God. Do you like frogs? No. No? No. Everything by the <laughs> I don't know if that's extremely loud. I actually have a phobia of frogs. Like a legit really? actual IRL phobia. Wow. Like, if I see one... Uncaged in the wild, I will literally <laughs> keep it like at a twenty foot distance minimum at all times. Okay, this goes back to actually like a childhood trauma. Oh my god! Where, okay, I have a story. This so, is before so, baseball. I'm, I'm like everything by the numbers. <laughs> Do you remember this shit? <laughs> I remember everything about you. I'm a good friend. Uncaged. I've I've never bad. heard anyone so scared of frogs that they would say uncaged <laughs> if they're found in the wild. That's crazy. So tell me about. As I wait for the match here for Incredon to go up, tell me about what you're talking about. So I'm like, I'm like, I don't know, like seven years old or something. And we're coming, me and my parents are leaving. It's like nine o'clock or we're leaving our friend's house for, from a party, like a dinner party. I'm walking home. It's like dark outside. My dad's come, come, like, come join the room, by the way. Me. Come join the room. Come join on uh, me. Join on me. Keep okay, going. Join on you. Um, I'm walking, I'm walking <laughs> down the sidewalk. And as I'm walking down the sidewalk, I see a big rock in the middle of the sidewalk. And, like, I'm a, I'm a child. So, like, my first instinct when I see a big rock in front of me is to kick it. So I go up to the rock, and I kick it with my foot. Except the rock was not a rock. It was a giant goddamn toad. Did like, the size of a, the size of a goddamn basketball. It leapt onto my leg, and then, like, up onto me. And I, my dad thought I had been, like, attacked by either a crocodile or a snake. And he came, like... Sprinting over, like I was like screeching at the top of my lungs, and oh I've been traumatized of, the, of them ever since. I mean, that's okay, terrible. I will, so it, 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 I will say it depends. There's some frogs I don't mind, like tree frogs, like the like the really cute, cool looking ones from like the rainforest. Um, the ones that I cannot stand are like toads and bullfrogs and like the big like the big ones that are like all like covered in warts and looks all slimy. I don't, I, I can't stand them. I hate them. Uh, as we get into the round, I want to say one condolences, stop, two stop thank you, chatty, you <laughs> and three. Amazingly, you don't even have like the worst story like that. Oh, Spectre delay. Oh, we gotta wait. Oh, okay. Well, we've got one minute and thirty. We've got one minute and thirty to talk about this. Where I'm, I might, I might be dreaming this, but I swear, someone in chat had like this fucking story years ago of like when they were young. There was like a wasp nest or something 
And like their dad, who was like addicted to meth or something, like watched them as it like fell on them or like knocked out of the tree on them and like Oh my god. Yeah, it was just like insane. It was the most insane story I've ever fucking heard. Of like the worst parent ever. It was crazy. Yeah, that's anyway. like funny traumatic. That's like actual well, awful traumatic. Well, the chatter who told it seemed to think it was funny in hindsight, I think. Um uh, to, uh, maybe like grimly, I can't remember. I may just be hallucinating this whole thing. Um, because now that I tell the story, like, <laughs> I hesitate to say you had to be there, but it just sounds horrible in hindsight when I tell it again now. It does, it does sound comfortable. It's just, it's just like, why, yeah, why is he saying this? <laughs> I'm legit terrified of frog. Like, when I go, when I go outside, if it's like any time where like the light levels have gone down, I have to have a flashlight out there. Like, <laughs> I, down here in Florida, there's frogs everywhere, and like I just I, I, I can't be outside at night without seeing what's in front of me. You would hate our country because we have poisonous, we have cane toads, which have poisonous skin. I'm gonna Google a picture. You would hate it. It's like a national sport here to like kill them with cricket bats, like knock them like their balls. And I want. Wait, are those the one that make the noise when you uh, run over them or something? Uh, probably people probably say that. Yeah, where like Australians love to slaughter them because they're an invasive pest and they're poisonous. Yeah, um, they look they look terrifying to me. I would not want one want, one want. Oh my god, they're enormous. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I I once cried when I was a little boy though because I didn't like uh, when all the other kids who I guess are more normal were like killing the shit out of them with bats and I was like this is I mean, bad. Listen, I, I I have a phobia of frogs. I will I don't condone like killing them or anything like that. Especially because they're so crucial to the environment. It's like it's like the curse, right? It's not like a cockroach where I can just step on it and feel no remorse. I'm like, oh god. Well, it's it depends on the perspective. I mean, do cane toads kill a lot of uh, things that they're not meant to be here to kill because they're invasive predators? Yes. On the other hand, they kill them by being eaten by them, and then they die to the poisonous skin of eating the toad. So really, skill issue shouldn't have eaten the cane toad. You lost in evolution. Anyway, in the match now. Yes. We got cost control versus giant specialist, which I mean, I know what Wooden Kron's buying with the giant specialist, but let's talk about the cost control because I, I, I'm kind of mixed on cost control. I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel like it's, I feel like it, 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 it should be better than it is, but I feel like I lose with it a lot. I like them. I like it a lot. See, I like both. I like heavy armor specialist. It's different games, different game styles. I like cost control because having more money can be really fucking powerful. I think. Having more units than your opponent is super good. Going for the sledges early is interesting. You know what? You just realized if you can attack and defense enhancement, you've now negated the debuff from that. So like, yes. But what I really I don't, don't know what the economics of that is compared to supply specialists. But you can still miss certain breakpoints like versus phoenixes. But what I don't like is again, it's the all on one side deployment. I also don't really like buying a single unit in round one, especially as cost control, because I believe in buying as many units as you can every round and having a big army uh, and never skipping a deployment opportunity. When you go cost control especially, only putting one unit out, like, okay, you put sledges out, like, big whoop. Like, you probably could put, like, an arc light out instead, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, it's not that they... big of a slam dunk. Oh, I lost track of who's on which side. Oh, yeah, Incredive. Incredon, Incredon must have started with either Balls or Marksman, because they have both. And if you know that, you probably shouldn't, like, just go all in on sledges round one. It just seems a bit weird. Do we... that all in on a unit that you probably is not going to win you the round. Arakasi says all one side is so much stronger than Biggs gives it credit for more than just a gimmick. I think it's a gimmick if you keep I... pushing everything onto that side. I think if you open with it, it's a strong opener. But I just don't like the idea of like only fighting in one quarter of the map when there are so much other places to be. Yeah, the, the reason why I don't like that is that it's very hard to predict outcome of the match because we've, we, we've seen so many rounds now where like you just get screwed over by the tower dis dis destruction timing and so like it it, it, it it guarantees the match is going to enter this weird phase where like you guys are destroying each other's towers or, yeah I, I mean they're destroying each other's towers and wait then, like it's it wait i just remembered arakasi is literally the person who has been doing this the entire tournament of course they're fucking sane it's not just a gimmick <laughs> Yeah, but I, I just find it hard to predict how the outcome of the match will go when you when when you like trade trade towers like this. It's hard to it's hard to strategize because because you know things get a bit loopy after you reach each other's towers and then have to meet in the middle. 
I just don't like it because I don't believe in clustering your force this much. I want to see someone just put this down, and if it can't be put down, then I'll I'll pay a bit more respect to it. Oh, you you're referring more to just like deploying like all on the front. I'm I'm I'm, yeah. I'm talking about just, like just leaving one tower completely undefended and being like, okay, I'm just gonna rush the other tower. I you know that that's its own thing, like this refuse flank kind of thing. And yeah, that I think is its own kind of choice. But I just don't like clustering your force like this all in one space. I think that like agree, this game yeah. isn't just about cluster as many units into one area at once. I think it's about multiple lines of battle, flanking. And I really do believe, you know, I'm not the best player in the world, but I do believe that it's just a very brittle strategy to put all of your eggs literally in one zip code. Yeah, and I think... I mean, I mean... Um, it forces your opponent to cluster back to Zarekaz, but I don't know if I believe it. Anyway, the round here... Uh, is happening, which is what we should really be focusing on. As the force yeah. walks forward, uh, the tower goes down, the clustered force gets stopped, the marksmen aren't going to be able to get through the fangs here, though, who are going to be able to push forward, especially with Phoenix air support. It is a bit of a mess, as you say, Sammy, uh, as now enemies are coming from all sides. Hero Ball gets that tower down, but it's only fangs left here, and a marksman um, for Incredon at this point. Yeah, but I think the storms are going to clutch it, yep. Yeah. And I was about to say, I think that what Inquiron needs are Storms because they're against a Fang Sludge Comp and with Storms that are all clustered on top of each other. And, like, Storms will just make such short work of that. Like you said, mm -hmm. they're all clumped, they're all together, you just AoE them all, all at once. Yeah, I, I'd like to see that. Now, I don't really see Inquiron... There you go. Now, now, surely you shield against this. If you are Arthur, you're doing Boy, this. Specialist. They, they, they... Mm. Oh, yeah, Inquiron... Arthur picked it up, but Inquiron... Skipped on the deployment specialist. To get yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love deployment I specialists. Always, yeah, and I always, I, I, I always have bad results with the orbital bombardment because I feel like it always misses the units I wanted to hit. It does come in over time, and it is a bit random. But here's the thing: I love deployment specialists for cost control specialists. Flood the mapping units. Get buy buy the thing every round and get oh. four units a turn. Oh um, my god, that's right. Yes, yeah. yes. but. Also, shield. You have to shield at this point, right? Like, you have to. Like, yeah. you're not even yeah, that clustered here with Arthur, but you're still pretty clustered. I want to see some shield in here. Okay, you have 150 left. Just get one shield, please, at least. Because Arakassian well, chat says you, you just cluster back, but I don't think that's the case at all. I think the whole point of why you're vulnerable is you can get one unit of storms or whatever to be more cost-effective. That's the name of the game in Mechabellum. You don't just cluster back. You bring in units that exploit the cluster is what I think. Yeah. I think, I think Ingrid's going to exploit it here with the orbital bombardment because there's no no shields coming in at all. And now I, I like I like what Arthur is doing. Is they're they're putting all these crawlers and phoenixes on their empty flank, and so now they're actually contesting on both sides. Like I mm -hmm. I feel like they're they're not just committing harder and harder and harder to this one like forward deployed flank, and I I like that for them. So do I. I like that now, especially with cost control, because you can buy so many units a turn and with the deployment specialist. Great way to now come back into the match on your left flank. I like that. I think that when you're flanking, win in one spot, then go to win somewhere else, rather than just falling into the same battle, as the Oblivion Bombardment doesn't do enough as it needs to. Like you said here, I think especially with the placement too, it needed to be further forward, because the units are moving out of its artillery area now. And oh my god, this oil slick is so clutch. Just stop the balls in the tracks and slow down the Rhino. Wait, what? But Rhino from the back. Flank Rhino. Yeah, flank Rhino. Flank Rhino from Ingridon coming in there, which is actually pretty freaking clutch here. I don't know if it's clutch enough. But Inkrodon's gonna get their tower, and this double tower paralysis, this could be everything needed. I think it's clutch enough. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because... But I think... Go on. No, no, you go on. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna predict that here. I'm gonna say that I think that Arthur, though, has started... Uh, uh, it's the start of a tidal wave, right? Because we've got deployment specialists and cost control, and... Uh, this wave of units is going to keep building and building and building, and it's going to be a question of, you know, like, can Incredon withstand all the units that are about to be thrown at them? We'll see. But they've got to be good units. And that's the thing we're going to see from Arthur yeah. here, is especially because... Oh, Mass Produce Fortress. Mass Produce Fort. Especially because all of these units are so clustered here, um, you haven't really got much beef on the left right now, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Arthur hasn't flanked, and I think if you're going to win, like, you can see even if the numbers advantage, that just unit... Choice and positioning wise, Arthur is still losing. So I think if I'm Arthur yeah. here, I want to be flanking. I want to be really oh, like. No. 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 What is this? No. Oh no, not the hacker. Oh, he doesn't even see it coming. The hacker for the rhino that Rincredon has recycled. Nice recycle from Incredon there. Oh, the flank. 
That's what we were talking about. The the oh, and the missile too. Oh, the overreaction. Oh. Oh, oh he's playing the mixes and crawlers. No. Oh, oh the phoenixes! No, the phoenixes won't get hit because they're air. But still, that's funny. Oh, that's so funny. I think one of the great things about this game is watching someone be read like a book. Or doing it yourself. And it, yeah. there's such a mental game to this oh, game. And I love seeing that. Boat, po the boats have arrived. Yeah. Giant specialist Incronon boats have arrived. And while Incronon you're... Also unlocked forts, by the way. Did Incronon grab improved forts? No. They, or the they mass produced. They did not. And that's the thing. is While Offer is just thinking rent-free about that Rhino was such a big reaction... Not prepared as much for the Overlords, though. Already got some Phoenixes on the field, so... I think they might do a good enough job, because... Already, a lot of everything else is dead. So I think the Phoenixes might just clean these boats up. I think Ingridon loves boats a bit too much. Maybe, yeah. I, I, think, I think it was the wrong time for boats. Um, yeah. You don't have enough of a front line yet, and, and the oh. oil slick is really hurting you, too. Uh, I, I, I think you are literally seeing Ingridon just fucking loves boats, like, as a person. And they were not the move there, I don't think. How did Arthur turn around the other flank? I I guess without the flank rhino, I guess that flank rhino was actually doing a ton for Incredon. Although, no, I think they did another unit of crawlers, maybe that unit of phoenixes. I'm not sure how they won on the, oh, Arthur won on the other flank. I have to go check and see. I want to own up to something really dumb I did. You know what I did? What? Um, You were cooing about the missile because it was like an extra part of overreaction. I was cooing about it because I got swept up in the moment and for some reason thought that somehow Incredon was allowed to place missiles on the flank to kill the hacker and the crawlers. Please don't ask me why I thought that. I just I just saw a missile going down. I was like, oh, and then Incredon places a missile as they watch the deployment in real time to kill the hackers. Like, what What am I? No. <laughs> it was a Beagle brain blast. All right, Beagle, whatever you want to say. We both had our, our, our broken brain moment. All right, Grandpa, let's get you back to the bottom of the ocean. What? Oh, I wonder... What happened on the north side? Because those those level two balls, I, don't, I didn't actually see what took them out. I guess maybe the phoenixes. I don't know. I have to watch it closely. But we do see shielded forts for Incredon to beef up the front line. But it's uh, is it enough against now? Oh my god, the two hundred percent damage overlord. Oh, I think it thinks it's gonna crush Incredon's front line. Yeah. Missile. That that thing is gonna. That thing's doing five thousand six hundred damage a shot. Missile instantly goes, I mean, the shield instantly goes down. Yeah, I'm just watching and learning here. Watch, I mean, watching to see how it plays out. The Incredible loves Fangs too, but they're not lasting long enough against the Storms. Can the fort hold here long enough? But not against the Phoenixes. Not against that. The, the triple Phoenix now down to just two, but... That is important. Oh, God, the Overlord just wins the trade because the damage upgrade. Oh, that's important. Killing those Phoenixes once you get amongst them? Now it's Incredon's game. Nice convincing now victory. You know the, the hacker has uh, purple fire when it dies, unlike everyone else's? That's weird. I think the hacker's an alien. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe. Um, What cards did they pick last round? Actually, well, they got... I know Arthur got the 200% damage when they got yet. So, Incredon... Oh, they got ranged specialist. Oh, that's oh. big. That's oh, probably... So they, they had the 12 meter range advantage for that whole fight, I didn't even notice. Probably quite helpful in making sure the Overlords didn't come too far forward and die to the Phoenixes too. Um, yeah, just a little bit. Wonder... Just a little bit, yeah. And then also, Incredon missiled the sledges at the start. Which again, we talked about the, the, the downside to forward deploying like this. It's, it's hard to shield your units when they're so forward deployed. I want to keep saying like a broken record, I still feel like god fucking god just please get Stormcallers or something. But I do like that you yeah. can get Skill Specialist to have that auto bombardment come in more. I don't think it was as impactful as a unit of Storms would be, but um, regardless, like even more than the boats. But the boats are coming in good yeah. now because as long as they have something in front of them, they don't have a lot in front of them, but as long as they have something in front of them with the balls as well, it's Ooh. okay. Replicate or mechanical division balls, does that do much for... I think so because there's no true crowd control past the sledges. For offer and the sledges die first, so I think it's actually quite impactful. If that ties up the phoenixes, that's already like game winning. Yeah. And there goes one of them immediately. Incredon just missling one unit of them, relying on the Overlord to kill the other. You can tell Incredon's paying close attention to how the battle plays out, knowing that the Overlord oh kills the sledges. God. Yeah. And Arthur went for the cost. He went for the launcher Overlord on his cost-controlled um, fortresses and master his fortresses, which like that fortress just died instantly because it yep. was lower HP and. You're building it for DPS, but it's it's not going to survive. It's on the front line. It's got lower HP. It's against overlords and marksmen. Yeah. 
Oh, this is clean. This is clean. This is clean. And Crudon is like, boats are good. Boats are good. Boats are good. Actually, the overlords, properly supported now, are doing a great job in a support damage roll. And I liked that Incredon went for the boats, but then didn't overinvest. Like, the boats have no upgrades on them. Um, only one of them was level 2. And then meanwhile, he goes for, like, replica a mechanical division on the balls and, and other units and beefs up the rest of his line while the boats just distract Arthur into trying to deal with them. Starbright, have we got a pronoun check on uh, on Incredon, by the way? Is Incredon... Sammy keeps saying he. Is that correct, Sammy? Do you know that? I'm like... Wait. Oh my god, have I been... <laughs> I'm like, hang on, let me just uh, check on Discord. Now I you're making me doubt myself. I also want to note that Arthur got Strike Specialist, as I so doubt in you, and did not flank. Don't love to see it. I think Arthur is struggling to, like, get the strategy cohesive yeah, so here. Yeah, is you slash him. I was not... I, I've okay. Liked, I, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm friends with Incredon, so I should know this. And I'm, uh, yes, you just made me doubt myself. A little bit of... Shame on you, streamer. Unfortunately, there's a... Well, no, actually, you can't see. Oh, good. Never mind. I didn't say anything. Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Mention nothing. As, uh... <laughs> Incredible's pronouns read as... P.O.T. P.O.T. <laughs> I mean, yes, that's true. Uh, more balls for Incredible? What am I, what am I missing? You're hiding something from me. No, no, it wasn't about the game. I'll tell you afterwards. Um, I, energy shields for Incredible's fangs is good here to make the line hold more. The balls of replicate, I think, are great. Um, High explosive ammo overlords for Arthur. Oh. I, like, never see this. I've tried it because I was like, oh, it makes their splash huge because they already have splash, so it's stacking. But in the end, I didn't find it was that useful. But the 40% damage decrease when you're doing the enemy. Incredon, shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up in chat, Incredon, for fuck's sake! Alright, well. Anyway, here comes this exciting round seven where we had a spectator delay hoist upon us. Oh, fine. Fucking get spoiler in the chat. Yeah, you did. Anyway, as the overlords come in, it looks like a close fight, and it's very scary and tense if all the overlords uh -huh. for offer might might win this, Sammy. Whoa, it's so close. Oh my god. If this is. Battle. I want to emphasize to the people I never lie to this is anyone's game here, as the level 1 overlords are slaughtered. Yeah, so. It, because of the stream delay, they type GG to each other, so I already knew. But then your icon uh, blocked it, so I was like, oh, save! It just had played on the end. But then fucking Incredon at the start of the round is still in the lobby for some reason and types some anime monologue about dedicating his victory to boat girls. So, <laughs> anyway, Incredon won. <laughs> don't put delay on the matches and don't do that. <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> anyway, what did you think of the match, Sammy? Boats. <laughs> um, I think that the I think that Arthur didn't commit super hard to f the forward deployment, which I think was good. But I think that Arthur's, especially his unit. Up oh wait, hang on, I don't know pronouns for Arthur, but I'm there. Saltspire. Uh, upgrade choices. Salt Oh, that is Saltspire. Sigmar. I was where that was from. Sigmar. Was That's that was bounty hunter yes. Saltspire. That is bounty hunter Saltspire. Right. Um, for example, on the forts, they have the launcher overload, but again, these are these are the what you call it, the um, mass-produced ones with less HP, and they're on the front line, so they just die straight away. Um, the a the high explosive ammo for the overlords, which I really feel like isn't countering much here. Like it's not if you have no AOE, it's not like that's going to just save you instantly. I feel like it's the especially hmm. the reduce their their single target damage so much, which you need against their overlords and balls and. Alina's like that, it's, um, I'm just, just trying to look and see and figure out, um, it's a lot of crawlers, despite there not being much, um, actually, no, there, there actually isn't a lot of AoE on, on Incredon's side. Also, I'm a fan, don't tell me to tell Starbright, I'm just casting. If you, uh, have feedback, put it in the Wayland Utani form for Starbright. Um, but like yeah. more Phoenixes for Arthur. And maybe get like extended range phoenixes so they don't get killed by the overlords because that was happening at the end there and Crudon's boats were just blasting them um but yeah i yeah. think i hear we've got some grudge matches coming up do you want to get into the next matches yeah, i think sure but yeah i, I, I think I you're think doing great solution there was go for don't go to your own overlords because i i feel like Incredon's gonna beat you at the boat game every time um, just go for <laughs> it, go for go for just more phoenixes because phoenixes already counter overlords. They counter the balls. They I mean, they counter the the fortresses. Um, 
and and you can deal with the the AOE stuff like the 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 crawlers that spawn for the balls and other things. You can deal with those in other ways. You don't need you don't need overloads to deal with all that. I agree. All right. Well, now uh, I think we're going to be going back to a Rothen because now it is time for well this this is the finally climbing out of the losers bracket lower <laughs> bracket right. This yes. is. I'm gonna go use my restroom, which is very far away from where I'm sitting. Of so course, it is. Wait a little bit. Don't so. key up your mic while you flush. Uh, as I here, do not. I have enough push to talk. Do you have a wireless headset? I bet you can no, hear it right now. I don't now. keep a headset on when I go to the bathroom. Well, keep your wireless headset on so I can make frog noises no, when you go to the bathroom. No, it's not wireless. It's wired. <laughs> anyway, it's a long cable. Anyway, we can see here, uh, as we just saw, Incredon who did enter in to the uh, loser's pit of Dante's Inferno uh, a couple of rounds ago, fighting their way back through, clawing their way. They just have to fight two by two arc now um, to claw their way into the, not even the semis, right? The finals, like straight into the finals against the winner of the upper bracket, the bougie bracket. Meanwhile, um, Ricochet, what the fuck? Hello? Hello! Hi there! I see Beagle's VTuber moving, but I don't I don't hear anything. Oh you're oh, you my call. toe. Okay. I'll entertain you, chat. Ow, I just stubbed my toe. I'm back and I stubbed my toe. Oh. I'm okay so anyway. To, uh, to a worse person. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Couldn't have happened to a worse person? I did I was trying to think of something insulting to say maybe. And you did! <laughs> what? Not even Musk? Really? <laughs> My god, anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, Sammy, we're gonna fight C2x2 two two Ark and Incredon and Crabs come off and Ricochet fight. I feel like you and I are gonna fight after that. What the fuck? I thought Kanor and I had like a rivalry going, but what is this? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is karma for strike baking against the... Uh, against my crimes. Um, I guess we got to pick one of these matches because I guess they're still happening simultaneously. So... Oh, is this, uh, Sammy, this is, wait, is this upper brag? I think, I think Starbright said um, she's only planning to zoom in on the best of three finals. I'm okay with this because um, that will uh, not make me go late in the stream today because I am like an hour and 20 away from my usual end point. So I'm fine with that as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do that. Then. Especially if it's a besta. Yeah, okay. We'll keep going simultaneous. Yeah, so there's probably going to be no aliens tonight, unfortunately. Pick, pick a match. No, they won't. Probably back to bounce back to crabs and ricochet, I think. I don't think we've seen ricochet yeah, we fight. Yeah, we didn't see Anchor Yeah, let's go, let's go see that. Your attention. Garcia Solace like, just tipped 10 dollars. Beagle, you don't have the old ring tone. I just trying to figure out where, if this is elimination or not. Uh, this should be the semi-finals because we're going to see this and then I don't know if we're pausing to see the upper bracket as well. Um, but I'm just okay. laughing because the, the picture she's sending me is called Round 7 Losers, so I'm not the only one, see. Um, but I, I don't know if we're watching the uppers as well after. But yeah, we're going to watch Crabs and Ricochet now. Uh, do you have the lobby? Because I don't. Starbright keeps telling me to join on her, but I don't have Starbright on my friends list. I found so. the lobby. I just found it in the thing. Yeah, I could. Oh, it's in the thing. Just join off me. I, I I just see it on the multiplayer like lobby list. It's I mean, like thank you. One. Wait, yeah. Arakazi says upper bracket was decided the round before last. It's me just waiting the lower bracket to finish. Wait, you're you're in the finals, Arakazi? Oh, so we didn't see that. Who was that against? I th was that when um, Fantastic Ms. Fox was like, I have bad news, Beagle? <laughs> it was against Fox. Ah, oh, rip. Okay, that happened a while ago. 
All right, then we're after this. It's just, like straight to the finals, I th think. No. It's this, then the losers fight the, their semis, then it's the finals. I think. Yeah, it's all good stuff, right? Alright, here we go. Crabs in blue, Ricochet in red. Selecting Rhino Specialist of a Mustang Crawler start. Crabs still thinking about what to go for here. And it's going to be Marksman Specialist uh, with Sledges and Fangs. That is a... Nice, meaty star. That's the kind of army I like to oh, see. Yeah. yeah. Nice balance comp. What would you add to that army right now? Arc lights usually is what I get. Um, I'm a huge believer in arc lights. Um, I don't even know if I would buy them. This, yeah, I would because you got three fangs, two sledges. Um, you can go for more marks if you want marks. If you're gonna, if you're planning to use marks instead of phoenixes as a mainstay, they're like the more. The other thing your army needs more, because you lack single target. So two more marks is the smart choice for right now. I'm biased against marks, so I like to buy phoenixes instead of them. So I kind of intentionally ignore buying marksmen. I just tough it out until I get phoenixes going. Um, arc lights are good as well, because even though sledges are good against crowds, they're not great. They're like a 6 on the scale, or a 7. Whereas arcs are like a 10 or a 9. So I'd probably put them on the flanks to protect for future stuff too, because the sledges can't recover the flanks. Thank you, Garcia, for the $10. Yeah. And Boat Girls for the $6.66. No, I never understood. The, the Rhino Specialist gets a level 2 Rhino for free on round 3. But then the Marksman Specialist gets the Marksman. I guess the Marksman is less valuable than the Rhino, technically. Yeah. And literally, because it's like 100 it. cost. Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's go. Some interesting formation for crabs. Look at this, like. This like oh. cross formation with the marksman sledges and fangs. Interesting. Yeah, column fangs to try and like buy more time, I guess. Oh, the camera dolly's so moving much along. Time for the yeah, it does buy them much more time for the marksman and column like that, just like the column crawlers do when you set them up like that. It's allowing the sledgehammer to have a good tank battle here, uh, main battle tanks on these light auto cannon hovercrafts. Taken out pretty nicely, and with the fangs coming in from the side, this is just a nice, strong order of battle. Uh, as the fangs come in perfectly to make sure those marksmen were never really useful. Always stuck on chaff. Nice deployment from crabs. Coming in strong here against Ricochet. I love seeing those cool formations. The game I is had, so much uh, about positioning, yeah. I have made a formation of fangs where... Well, it's fangs and marksmen, where it actually spells out the word fang. With the fangs. <laughs> I want to try it in a match sometime. See if I can pull it off. And it needs, like I think, minimum like six rounds to do. <laughs> so if I can survive to round six, I can pull it off. That's so stupid. Uh, I have a screenshot of it on my Steam profile there for references, if you want to see. <laughs> sure. Um, but yeah, the, the game is a lot about positioning, and Krabs has immaculate positioning here. This is the... This this shows you the power of experience from crabs, I think, completely. But don't count Aracassia, not Aracassia, um, Ricochet out just yet. Um, because Ricochet is also a very veteran player. You've seen a couple of Titans go up against each other here. Got those balls in the front for a strong line. They do go down first to the level 3 marksman, though. Unlike how the sledges for crabs are very well defended. Yeah, those, that, that fang formation again. It just completely stops the balls from getting on top of the... Top of the sledges yeah on the other side it's it's more of a route but mustangs now have shown up for for crabs over there the the comp more well-rounded it's another win for for crabs it's an immaculate position here from crabs i'm really impressed like the formation is doing so much here it's not even that the units themselves necessarily are that much better than what rick's bought it's just where they're placed in tandem with each other is so cool Skip for crabs. Rick going for incendiary bomb. Let's see if that pretty formation can get messed up here. Note that uh, last round Ricochet skipped while crabs took tech specialist. Rick getting 50 credits now, but that means crabs gets 50 cost off every tech they ever buy for the whole match. I feel like I know which one I think is more more powerful, you know? Yeah, I think that, I think you can't pass. Well, you can't. it depends when it comes in, but this early it's hard to pass that up. Yeah, and... You know, it did allow Rick to get two units of balls out, but still wasn't enough. However, because we are still in early rounds here, that incendiary 
can't really be shielded against. Like, you don't really have the money to spare, you know? The one thing I will say, though, in the favor of crabs, is that really only kills the fangs. The big win here is if the level 3 marksman walks far enough forward. But if it aggroes on something beforehand, the sledges just won't care about that fire. I think it will claim the marksman, which is the biggest Phoenix victory. Is out, <gasps> Phoenixes are pretty good. Yeah, but the level 3 marksman stops literally right before the oh, fire. right there. Oh my god. Oh, but the, I mean, it is doing some work on the sledges. The sledges are losing health and it's making them vulnerable to the stangs. It is. It is over it's a long the period of time they're doing enough. I think oh, because... I think because crabs doesn't have enough damage other than the sledges, um, it's taking too long to get through the fire there and they do go down. Yes, and I don't think that crabs has enough left to deal with that level 2 right now. I forgot, I forgot that power spike was coming. Yeah. I was going to say that Phoenix killed the marksman. Oh, God. It might be a thing, but no. <laughs> my, my cat is yowling, sorry. Um, this isn't over yet. Um, the Rhino is not actually an anti-crowd unit, and I think that maybe the Stangs, especially the Tower Down... Uh, now yeah, we're, we're not with 44k HP at level 2. It's, it's way too tanky. We'll see! We'll see! If they get that tower! I think if they get the tower, it'll still one-shot as a problem. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. No, you're right. It has too much health at 44. It's like a giant. Level 1, I reckon they could have done it, but level 2 with the other Mustangs not here. Getting that tower actually isn't worth it here, I think. Uh, it's, they still give a tiny bit of XP, right? Yeah, but I mean, tower. they they might be able to do more damage to it, but I think you're right, it's just too strong. Yeah. That's not the cat talking about never being fair, that's the cat wanting a boyfriend. <laughs> yes, that so little bundle on my chair woke spike. up. Now we're kind of on even footing here. Senior Defense Specialist. Oh, advanced fire control, okay. So Rick picks in your defense, the Idris Elba upgrade, and then Krabs gets the fire control upgrade, which I'm, I'm curious if Krabs is going to put this on, on, on Mustangs again. I hope not. Hiring Idris Elba this early is really expensive. Like, this is a yeah. fallow round for Rick, investment-wise, that Krabs should be able to come out on in front with by only having got advanced firepower. Because how much is advanced firepower? It's like 100 at most, right? 150 maybe? Yeah. I, I do feel like Rick has some cushion because he just hit the, the, the... They just hit the power spike with the Rhino. The level 2 Rhino. Mm. And that does give like some cushion where it's like, okay, I can have one round where I like, splurge for something nice that's... Instead of going hard on units. Um, oh, I... I uh, hmm. Rick goes for the defense upgrade, defense enhancement. Um... But even with it and senior defense, 6627 on the level 1 balls, the level 3 marksman still hits for 6813, now 7494, as Krabs buys the attack specialist upgrade. So unfortunately, not really going to make a difference to them. We'll make a difference to everyone else, though. Yeah, Krabs does have a lot of, like, very small chip units. He only has the two, the three Phoenixes now, sorry, in the marksman. The Phoenixes um, are a good investment, for sure. Yeah, the um, Phoenixes are always good. Those flanking crawlers, though, distracting those phoenixes so the, those, uh, the balls actually get in onto the sledges. Yeah, but those sledges hold for so long, even without half of their friends there. They just hold for so long. Leveled sledges are so tanky. And the phoenixes do come yeah, back yeah. in now now, and they aggro onto the rhino a little bit. But I think the tower's still going to get got. Uh, yeah, the sledges on the other side are still unanswered. Uh, oh, actually, no, they look like they must have got taken out, but... Yeah, Mustang clearing up those phoenixes. Um, maybe if the tower gets got here, something can happen, but I don't know. I don't think there's anything to kill those I, Mustangs. Yeah, the Mustang board is too strong. I think we need to start seeing Stormcallers come out. Both, something. For, honestly, for both of them. I think both I think both sides can benefit from Stormcallers. Um, or Arclights. Hey, I mean, this is why in round yeah. one I said I would have gone Arclights as crabs, because then you just don't, you, ha you don't really have this problem as much. Yeah. Oh, that rhino's level 3 now. That's a big rhino. That is a big rhino. Now, Krabs... Krabs has a nice force, but something is not working. I think you were right that until the Phoenixes had a lack of single target, I think in general more damage is needed because the Sledges hold for so long, but just... Yeah. You know, shit isn't dying quick enough. Um, I agree with you, some storms here could be quite nice, uh, especially because they've got, yeah. like, clusters of stangs and balls. Oh, no! Crabs put the 200% damage on the stings again. I mean, they are the highest damage last round, but, but I, I, I still think it's a mistake. They're the highest this yeah. round, too, because they're carry stings this time. I still don't know why Crabs never gets the range on the stings, 
but uh, we'll see if it comes. The thing. It's like, I think it's necessary if you're running Stings. I, I do mean, too. It's been every time. You notice the Cubs also get uh, Junior Manufacturing as well. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. Yeah, going into the going into the economy, hoping for a round that goes longer than this one. If you do that, you know what I mean. Yeah. And it's worth noting, I think a reason Crabs lost there was those two Phoenixes getting pulled by the crawlers in the corner. But now you see this like, wait, who's? Oh, that's Rick's wasps. Oh, but mm. Crabs has already put bustings there, so I think Crabs has secured his flank this time. But Maybe. I don't know if they're gonna clear the units fast enough for the phoenixes to switch and get onto the front line. Those are the mech crawlers, Sammy. Those are speed banes. They are. They are fast, and I don't know if the mustangs will kill them quick enough, especially with the wasps spawning in. We'll see. We're gonna find out. I think they might be okay, but it depends if the wasps kill a lot before the crawlers have done it. Holy shit! They're they're oh, mulching them. Down. Check back on that flank oh, later, but it looks looks yeah. bad for crabs. As meanwhile on the front line, yep, balls in to kill these high level sledges. Still oh, not really any extra, absorption. and still not really any extra damage for crabs. Like what units were bought for crabs there? Just mustangs more? I'm not sure. I was. I I, I couldn't tell. I, yeah, that rhino wasn't even leveled after its victories of last round, which is insane. Yeah. Uh, because it's oh, still it's, doing it so much. It was a dead round for Rick, by the way. I just noticed. Uh, but the, the Chad Mustangs, the Chad hard carry Mustangs, actually break through to the tower. They're now coming to the main line where they can. They might just rip through this damage. Let's see. Oh, these are um, crabs Mustangs coming in from the side. I like the force crabs yeah. has left here after they won on crabs' right flank. This looks really good. I think oh. crabs has this. Yeah, especially with the 200% damage Mustang. Yeah, there's three Mustangs left. Yeah, they got it. Yeah. And like, I, I just think you have to have a range enhancement because that unit of the Mustangs, they would all be alive right now if they had the range enhancement and that's so much DPS. Mustangs are a DPS unit and yeah. they can't DPS, they're so squishy so you can't let them get close and that range enhancement, that extra 40 range, it just lets them, lets them sit in the back, pour fire down and do their job. Uh, without it, they just, they just end up taking too many casualties trying to do, trying to get the damage uh, on target. I agree. I think... As the Tiberian Sun intro sound plays and the lightning storm goes down, I think that Stangs very much want that range to keep doing their job in the back more like a marksman, uh, definitely. Yeah, they're they're a DPS, they're a squishy DPS unit just like a marksman, just like an arc light, um, without armor enhancement that just wants to sit in the back and, and blast things. Yeah. There's a lot of upgrade arrows here and I really want to see our players um, level them up because I think levels do win games. Interesting. The, the steel balls need to be upgraded. They're, they're doing so good, and I think with that little bit of extra oomph to them, they'd really, uh, okay. Yeah. I don't think going all in on the Giants is good. And another debt from Rick. This is the second debt in a row. And I agree with you completely. Like, balls need upgrades. Like, missing the upgrade on even one of these balls is punishing, because with their short range, they're a unit that just does nothing if they die in the first 5 or 10 seconds, but they do everything if they live for 20. Like, that's all it takes. And especially, especially with energy absorption, which, which is just... It's 60% extra HP, too, so, like, it, that just gets exponentially better when you upgrade their... Exactly. Their because they can yeah. become a real, real vampire threat like that. Yeah, and like we were saying, Krabs does not really have... Aside from the, the one unit of Chad Mustangs, not a lot of a lot of hard damage for the balls. Really, no. he has the phoenixes, but they're they're there's only one or two level two phoenixes, and the 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 balls have pretty heavy numbers right now. The this EMP storm. storm is doing some nice work, slowing some units down, completely destroying some others that are small enough to die to the lightning. Uh, that that marksman barely surviving as the front lines meet here. Without the wasp, yeah. no problem on the flank uh, for crabs. What do you see here, Sammy? I'm seeing that crabs got extended range on the Mustangs, and also I'm noticing that um, uh, Rick has no sort of wave clear for these Stangs and these and these and these sledges still. Um, yeah. So you have this giant horde of Mustangs, and the, the balls can't get through because they take too long. Um, but yeah, yeah, just no wave clear. I think you need. Uh, I, I, I think the storms need to come out. I don't think that fortress was going to do anything here. Yeah. Oh, and it's close. It's very close. When you go into giants like that, but I mean, neglect close your to, overall... Close to dying, not the game's close. I think the game is one side. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I mean. Yeah, Rick, Rick's very low here. And I think it's like you said. When you put that giant down, you're not getting the upgrades. And how important are upgrades, yeah. right? It was elite recruited too. It's a level two with the mm. with the nano repair kit. That's what, that's what Rick was going for. But... They put it, uh, he puts it on the flank with the, the, the Chad, like, 334 damage. 365,000 damage over the entire... I, 
Ma know, match Mustangs. Wow. That's ridiculous. They're doing more than the level four mark, triple what the level four marksmen are doing. Um, and now you have the 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 amp core level two phoenixes. Oh, like that, that's so that much. Fortress, that nano repair kit ain't gonna do anything because it's just gonna get melted. Maybe if it had. I don't know. I think when you, like, put a lot of money and item and investment into one big unit, it can be really good as something you're doing aggressively to, like, okay, here's what I'm going to make you deal with now on the enemy team. But when you expect something like this to bail you out, I think almost always, in my experience, it's better to have just invested in your army with upgrades and more units instead. Because that one unit... I find that putting all your eggs in one basket can work on the attack, but when you do it on the defensive to try and fix your army and bail you out, it almost always fails. Exactly. And we do see a wave clear answer coming in from Rick, <laughs> but it's high explosive Mustangs, which without having range enhancement, I feel are just going to die to the sledges and the enemy Mustangs. They're going to they're gonna charge forward valiantly and then get blown up. The high explo has been there for uh, at least a few, a uh, couple rounds, I think, for Rick. And oh, I agree with you, it hasn't been doing enough that. because then the Mustangs are cutting their damage so much against the sledges. It is rough stuff. Oh, I mean, oh the, the, the giant firestorm. Yeah, and... It's gonna be enough to take up the sludge line. The marksman does walk into it this time, but they're living long enough to get a few shots off. Anything is better than nothing. Fighting in the fire here, and it does cream its way through the sludge line lowly, because again, Crab still doesn't have a lot of damage apart from the Mustangs. Oh, and it kills all the Chad Stings on, on, on yeah. the Crabs, and they all die into the fire, because they're still squishy. They might have 200% damage, but they're still squishy little Mustangs. Ooh. And uh, I think... I think Rick just pulled it back with that, with that, pulled the trick out of his hat. Quite frankly, in round seven, you have enough money that if you see Incendiary on the field and you're not ready for it, you knew, you should know it was going to happen. Maybe Krabs didn't yeah. care and was like, let it happen one time. Maybe Krabs just didn't think of it and thought other things were more important. But uh, it's not going to be here again. And Rick manages to beat yeah. back. But is that is that pressure relief Look there at, enough? Look at all the upgrades on Rick's side. And I think I think Krabs is doing the right thing here. Krabs looks like they're going harder into their Mustangs with range enhancement. Um, but I think I think Krabs needs I think just more more single target damage. I'm not. Yeah. I think Krabs has always lacked damage in a single target, like Phoenixes or Storms. And I think Rick just lacks I, upgrades. Like imagine if like these balls were all level three, which they could be by now. Yeah, there we it go. Looks like, okay, Rick's going in for the upgrades and Krabs upgrades. There, um, Phoenix doesn't buy any more though. Yeah, both players foregoing oh. some deployments here in order to get their upgrades going. I like that. Uh, Electromax on the sledges too, which I think could be huge. With was mechanical rage on them last round? I don't remember seeing mechanical rage on them last round. Interesting. Crabs relying on the sledge line here to do the damage oh, as that, well. With that tech specialist coming in so hard for crabs. Crabs has so many upgrades. Yeah, and those sledges, those level two sledges have um, a very Leak crew level of damage now. We'll see if it's enough. Oh my god, I just noticed. Yeah, baby, one through three seven here. Photon. Oh, that's a pretty clutch oil. It's gonna slow those level three balls down and the fortress. The fortress is up range though. Yeah, these sledges with photon as well are such a powerful force. They're not gonna kill you quickly but they are able to, to do something. However, those high-level balls don't really give a damn. And now the question is, is Krabs' lack of single target finally going to bite him? Well, kind of looks like it. He to Snoop Eagle because the EMP got onto those sledge, onto those balls, and it looks like it might have shut them down. Oh, got rid of their damage absorption. Oh, oh but the Fortress, the Fortress now, that was bots along with the Nano Repair. Oh, but a cannon out DPS, a cannon out heal the DPS. Just enough. Things. Just enough Phoenix damage. You know, done to yep. perfection, and that's why Krabs is in there fighting, and we're here in the toilet watching. <laughs> yep. GG. That was looking oh, a little scary there for a second, but Krabs pretty definitively yep. uh, clawing their way back through the losers. Uh, we're in the losers, right? I, I I don't know anymore. Yeah, we're in the losers because Krabs uh, lost to Arakasi, who I think yeah, is yeah, in yeah. the finals. Oh my god, could we get a grudge match? That'd be fun. I think um, we will. But. MVP of this match, actually, which again, I'm just being, I'm just being like, uh, anything I call out, don't do it. I mean, as being bad, you should just do it, chap. His apparently looks very good. These Mustangs with the with the 200% damage, look at how much damage they did over that match. Insane. And then during that last round. Oh my god, they did uh, 750,000 damage. Insane on, on a Mustang unit. 
Yeah, when um, the Mustangs get to live with range, God. Yeah, and I think I think the key difference there compared to where we saw this done in the last the the other round is that the Mustangs the, the, when when Crabs did this last time, the Mustangs were by themselves essentially on a flank with no support, um, fighting against like storms and an arc light. So like they were just dying before they even got to touch anything, and there was nothing to chaff for them or support them. Here they had adequate support. They had phoenixes. They had chaff. They have fangs. They have sledges. Um, and so they're able to just sit at the back and just blast. I mean, they, they killed a level three fortress with nano repair at the end there. They're, they're doing yeah. insane damage because they had they had stuff in front to, to stop them from getting shut down. And I think that's that, that just showed how much they can shine. Mustangs are very good at dealing damage. I don't use them much. Um, but I think especially in combination of a balanced force of like phoenixes there too, a good amount of damage there. In the end, um, you know, I was always worried if there wasn't enough, enough single target. But I think you're right with the EMP on the sledges. The balls couldn't life vamp their way to be as strong as they were. A nice tech there and good use, as you said, of tech specialists throughout the yeah. match for crabs. And do you know if uh, EMPing the energy absorption removes the 60% health bonus? Because if so, that's like enormous. So I believe it removes the health, yes. The way it works, I believe, is that the damage is applied first, then the health is removed from EMP. So, depending on the, the matchup of units, it can make it like, you know, if, if you have an extra 5,000 health and a maximum of EMP hits you for 5,000 damage, it's still going to do its job, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, because it takes the shot before it gets worn off, but otherwise, like, Sledges, which do very little damage to the balls, it's like one big shot that does 60% of their HP, yeah. Yeah. And for Rick here, I'm trying to think of what Rick could have done differently. Um, I think... Upgrading those balls early. All your balls should have been level 3 by this point. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what you were seeing across the battle is those where those level 3 balls went, there was nothing much that could kill them for a lot of the battle. The phoenixes had to get onto them. They were very scary. Yeah, but they, they only got stopped in the end because the oil slick slowing them down. So now, um, I'm in the lobby, by the way. I'm for that Forge's play. So, Incredon uh, defeated 2x2 two two Arc and advanced, and that means the next match we're going to see before the finals, uh, to decide who's going to go up against Arakasi for the finals, is Incredon, the Crabs come off, another grudge match, as Starbright points out to me, uh, from that match before of uh, Crabs versus Incredon. Remember of all the... Was that one of all the boats? What happened in Crabs versus Incredon? It was a good match. Oh, wait, and Crabs versus Incredon. Wasn't that the one where Krabs tried to boat back against Incredon and Incredon won? No, no, no. That was the one we just watched with Incredon and, um, uh... Uh... Wait, Arakasi says Fox... This is... Wait. Arakasi is in the finals of the lower... What? Fox fights the winner of this match? Okay, because everyone gets a second chance. Okay. So Fox isn't out yet. Never mind. So now, it's Incredon or Fox. <laughs> or Krabs. So we've got two okay. more matches in the finals. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. I, I, we're in the lobby. We're just waiting for crabs, I think. I see where they had to be um, best of ones now all the way through until the final at least. Because, like, yep. I, I, every, I thought at some point maybe the loser's bracket stuff would wear off. But everyone gets a second chance, I see. No, I've seen that bracket a lot with Dota tournaments. Check your uh, DMs on Discord, by the way. Yeah, I saw. I, I clicked on that during the last match. The fucking fangs screenshot. <laughs> I want, to, I want to use it in an actual match. Uh, you can do it by round six, because they're so cheap, and if you get deployment specials, you can do it even earlier. I'll post it in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I, I just showed it to them. It's stupid. 